not know, but there's 158 wins, 53 losses, four times, 37 winning seasons here at Rutgers Stadium. Rutgers will receive. The Scarlet Knights will be moving left to right on your screen, and Ron Allen and Gary Melton are back deep for the Scarlet Knights. They stand at the goal line. Kicking off for Colgate is Rick Brown, and this ball game is underway. It's a line drive kick taken by Allen at the 10. He's to the 20, to the 30. And he knifes his way across the 30-yard line to the 33. And that's where Rutgers will put it in play. First and 10 for the Scarlet Knights there. Rutgers on offense. Up front, they'll go with their fine center, Travis Broadbent. Maurice Owens and Tim Christ are the guards. Alan Mitchell and Donald Forbes the tackles. And James Jenkins, the tight end. James Guarantano starts at split end. Melton, the flanker, Dorsey and Hall behind quarterback Tom Tarver. Jenkins in motion. Here's the give. It looks like it's William Bailey who gets the started tailback. And he is ridden down at the line of scrimmage. Not much yardage there. All right, the Colgate defense. Red Raiders play it well on that first play. And up front, they'll go with the defensive ends, James Moore and Tyler Whaling. Gray and Pritchbaum are the tackles. Mike Jasper, the inside linebacker. Donahue and Morelli, the outside backers. Burke and Nash are the safeties. And Taylor and Driscoll are the corners. Second down and 10. Bailey at the 35 and then ridden down at the 40-yard line. So he picks up about five or six on the play. Pretty good quick move by Bailey, the uh, youngster, redshirt freshman, a walk-on who was awarded a scholarship. Had a good game last week against Kentucky. Carried for 19 yards in his first action for 69 yards. Did a pretty nice job. The Rutgers right now operating against a completely def different defensive scheme and style of play than they did last week with Kobe coming in with the 4-3 and a more conservative style of defense. Uh, Kentucky last week using the 50 and very aggressive. Here's John Murphy, the tight end in motion this time. to give us to Dorsey up the middle. He's got a huge hole. It's a 50 to the 48-yard line. Nice quick move by Dorsey. James Moore, number 90 for Colgate, had a shot at him in the backfield. But uh, Dorsey showed you his excellent speed as he literally ran right in and out of the tackle of Moore. And a good gain and a first down for Rutgers. Dorsey, the sophomore out of Somerset, New Jersey, six foot, 218 pounds, had 23 carries a week ago, 110 yards. Rutgers coming out also in a different offensive alignment uh, and with a two-back offense. Last week they started with a single back. Dorsey, the only back in the offense last week. This time nothing doing as the Red Raiders play it well. Jim G. Papoulis makes the tackle. Glad you said it first, Lou. I uh, was hoping that would be the case. And that time they just didn't get Gian Capoulos blocked at all. No chance in the backfield for the Scarlet Knight running back. Second down. And call it about 12. At midfield, just underway. First quarter, no score. Rutgers on the march. Here's Tarver straight back to throw. He fires and in and out of the hands of Jimmy Can, the intended receiver. A little bit high, and pretty good coverage offered by Colgate as well. Back out of the backfield, Jim Can, an excellent receiver coming out of the backfield, just a bit beyond his reach. One of those semi-catchable balls, that would have been an excellent catch to make. Tough one, but but something that some uh, a player of Jimmy Can's ability can make. Third down and 12, ball at midfield. And Tarver calls timeout. So he, he calls time, didn't like what he saw in the Colgate defense, and there's a timeout on the field. 12 minutes, 37 seconds remaining in the first. No score. Many scientists say global warming is an experiment with the Earth we can't afford to take part in. Already, the seven warmest years of this century occurred in this past decade. Yet rainforests that could help stop this warming trend are being destroyed 50 acres a minute, every minute of every day. The Sierra Club says it's not too late to do something. Find out how you can make a difference. Do it for your kids, but do it today.
Meanwhile, the Tokyo stock market fell off. Morning. Stock is made. Cash thread. It's all yours. I need to watch the weather. The sister had a game this afternoon. Yellow umbrella on the mountain. You want to see the umbrella? Uh, um, yeah. I wear it underneath, certainly, because it's a chilly rain in Tokyo. Bye. 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 Just going for your songs, Tess? Cable. It's part of life. This message was brought to you by TKR Cable Company. We're making it work. Also, what's doing in Tokyo? And in the arts and leisure section, how some women prove that real power lies not in being the target of jokes, but in telling them. Okay, well, it looks like we have some sunshine today. In fact, most of the day, some clouds may be rolling in later on this afternoon. High around 75 degrees. And for tomorrow, look for a mix of sun and clouds. It'll be very... Rutgers Band, welcome back to Rutgers Stadium where there's no score. Rutgers on the march. Here's Mother Knights. Third down, though, and 13. A big third down conversion coming up here. Tarver to throw. Fires has Marantano. First down across the 35-yard line. Slides down at the 34 yard line. Terrific job of pass protection by the Rutgers offensive line. Lou, not only did they give Tar Tarver time to throw with the football, but they gave him field of vision by keeping the other players, the defensive players, so far away from him. They gave him a passing lane to throw in. That's very important when you have small receivers like Rutgers has. Tarver has to have the lanes to be able to see those guys. Nice job. Murphy. Dorsey up the middle, and probably is across the top for another record first down. Rich Burke was run over, and Dorsey with his imitation of a steamroller that time. I tell you, that's scary for a defensive back. Burke, not real timely, but giving away a 30 pounds to Dorsey. Burke weighs in at about 190. Dorsey just under 220, and Dorsey did what a true fullback should do. When he's in the open field like that, and there's an opportunity to run somebody over, hey, take it up one side and down the other. Good hard running by T.K. Dorsey. Dorsey, two rushes, 26 yards. 13-yard average in the back. First down and 10 for Rutgers at the 19-yard line. Just under the 12-minute mark in the first. Here's Dorsey again. This time down to the 17-yard line. The Red up there. Okay. It's ninth of the nation, Division One AA in scoring. Yeah, but this is a totally different club than uh, than what BU was. This is a much bigger, more physical offensive line with Rutgers very, very big in the offensive line. Right, that, that last play, a very quick trap. Good move by Dorsey to take advantage of the block of his offensive line to get good yardage on first down. Second down and seven. Here's Jimmy Can. Spins and twists down to the 13-yard line. Jimmy Can, six carries a week ago, 20 yards. Coach Graber wants to use all three tailbacks, Frank. Well, he has very talented tailbacks that all do different things well. He wants to take advantage of their different strong suits and use them in, in, in a blend. And I, I think that's good coaching. Keeps everybody mentally in the game. Plus, it keeps your backs very, very fresh. And that's something very important, especially on the college level. These are young guys. Can't use them to death, if you will. For third down conversions, Rutgers two for two so far in the game. Colgate looks to come on a blitz and Tarver back to throw. He's in trouble and he will go down. So the Red Raiders come up with a big defensive play. Getting in there was number 58 TJ Donahue, sophomore outside linebacker at seven tackles a week ago. That's, well, that's an experience that time by Tom Tarver. It's, you know, his only second varsity start and it was pretty well blocked, Lou, but Tarver couldn't pick up a secondary receiver, should have at least thrown the football away and prevented the loss. John Benestat, the freshman place kicker, is in to attempt a field goal. It is, actually it's not Benestat, and the kick it hits the post. It was not Benestat, it was Jeff Hansen who was in to kick the field goal. So, Coach Graber makes the change there. Benestat was the place kicker a week ago. Well, he was very, very inconsistent, had two, two and a half kicks blocked. It depends on who you talk to, whether the first one was, was officially blocked. And Graber promised some changes on his special teams. There's one right there with Hanson, the straightaway kicker, missing the field goal as it was short. All right, Colgate comes out on offense, and the Red Raiders will line up like this up front. They'll go with Nick Verbitsky, the center, and we'll give that to you after this play. It's first and ten for the Red Raiders. Here's Goodwin back to throw, and has a receiver nearly intercepted. 
It was intended for the tight end, Jeremy Garvey, and it falls incomplete. All right, Colgate on offense. Up front, they'll go with center Nick Verbitsky. Lawler and Browns are the guards. Bickle and Bubendorf are the tackles. Jeremy Garvey, the tight end. The split end is Dan McCarthy. George Delaney is the flanker. He's a good one. Hopko and Norton are behind quarterback Dave Goodwin, who we spoke about in the pregame. Second down and 10 for Colgate. We'll give you the Rutgers defense after this play. Ball is marked at the 24. Here's the give up the middle. There's not a whole lot of room there. Tom Norton, the tailback, carries. And he stopped after a two-yard pickup. The Colgate, excuse me, the Rutgers defense up front. The nose tackle, Marty Mays. Scott Miller and Chris Jones are the ends. Sean Williams and Elnardo Webster, the outside linebackers. The inside backers, Todd Lane and Jamil Jackson. Malik Jackson, who had an excellent game at free safety. Willie Wilkes, the strong safety. And the corners are Ron Allen and Rusty May starting for Marshall Roberts. There's a fumble on the play, and it appears like Rutgers has recovered. We'll have to wait and see. No call yet, and I guess Colgate was able to fall back on the football. Tim Brown. What an excellent first series for the Rutgers defense, picking up where they left off last Saturday. Rutgers very big, very physical in the defensive line, and they're playing that way. Very, very important for them to do so. Here's the kick by the punter, Rory Crump. Marshall Roberts brings it back up near midfield to the 49-yard line. And Rutgers will go on offense again. 8.35 remaining in the first quarter. Rutgers with an opportunity. They attempted a field goal, hit the post, and we have no score. One of the things they did last week that was not positive in the mind of Doug Graber and wouldn't be in any coach's mind was the fact that they did not capitalize on their scoring opportunities four times inside the 20-yard line, and they came away empty. Rutgers cannot continue to do that week in and week out and play with the big boys. Rutgers' first drive was 10 plays, 43 yards. They used up five minutes, but again came up empty. Here's the gift to Jimmy Can, who really has a nice run here as he spins across the 40 to the 39. And Rutgers getting good blocking at the point of attack. That's, and that's most important. It's what's up front that counts. That time, Jimmy Can led through the hole by Big Allen Mitchell. He's 6'3", 290. Jimmy Can at about 6 foot 190. Hit behind Mitchell. The defensive players couldn't see him. He used that, those quick feet to scoot ahead for about a 12-yard gain. That's what Jimmy Can does best. He's got great vision from the backfield. Eye formation this time for the Knights, and Can again running hard, but a small pickup this time as he gets about two or three, maybe down to the 37-yard line. Quick trap play inside, but that time Colgate had good penetration. That's one of the ways that you can mess up a trap play. You've got to be a fly in the ointment, if you will, Lou. You've got to get good penetration, get in there, block it, mess up the blocking schemes in the offense. Colgate did that that time. That's why they were successful holding Rutgers for only a two-yard gain. All right, here's a second down and eight at the Colgate 36-yard line. Again, the eye formation for the Knights with receivers split left and right. Tarver rolls out to the right. Now he's in trouble. He'll tuck it in and elusively gets down to the 31-yard line. And, of course, that's the added dimension that Tarver supplies you. Well, he was looking for James Jenkins. It was a great play-action fake into the line of scrimmage. He faked left and then rolled right. He was looking for his big tight end, James Jenkins, who had a great game last Saturday against Kentucky. However, Jenkins was real covered. Tarver showed good presence of mind not to force the throw, pulled it down, and as you said, Lou, used his added dimension, his running ability, took it around the corner, and made a decent gain out of it. Now third and one. Again, eye formation for the Knights. Third and one at the 29. Here's the gift to Can, and he pushes ahead. It'll be close. They may have to measure on this one. He went over right tackle behind big Don Forbes, 6'1", 275 pounds. Pretty good job by the outside linebacker, though, for Colgate. T.J. Donahue, the knife in there, got a good angle, made a good stop. It's going to be real close. I don't know if they got enough of a push, Lou. Wait and see. Wait for them zebras. They'll come out and measure. Tom Tarver will check it out for Rutgers. A beautiful afternoon here at Rutgers Stadium. Bright sunny skies, as we mentioned, a little bit breezy. And
and it appears that the Knights are going to be short. So they're short by about a foot, and the crowd, of course, here wants Rutgers to go for well, it. I think Rutgers will go for it, Lou, because of the state of the kicking game that they have right now. I'm sure that Coach Graber doesn't feel real confident in any of his field goal kickers at this moment to attempt what would be a very, very long-range field goal. He's got the superior size in the offensive line. I look for him to pound the ball up the middle to try to pick up the first down. And Rutgers will indeed go. Fourth down and less than one. Out of the eye formation, the Knights line up at the 29-yard line. Here's the give to Jimmy Can, who slides through again, off right tackle. And it appears as if he may have enough. Colgate says no, but... It's going to depend on the spot, Lou. T.J. Donahue again knifed in from his left outside linebacking position. Got good penetration. Good move by Jimmy Can to be able to duck under and try for the first down. I don't know. It depends on the spot. And they will measure. I think he's short, Lou. I don't know. <laughs> No, Colgate has stopped Rutgers. So the Red Raiders get a big lift early in the game. Tarver thought that he had gotten it, but the referees signal otherwise, and Colgate with a big defensive stand there will take over. Rutgers has got to find somebody to block T.J. Donahue right now. He's making the penetration and making the plays. Remember, we alluded to it in the beginning, Colgate playing a different defense, 4-3 more disciplined than Kentucky's 50 defense, which is very aggressive. You've got to change your whole blocking schemes and your offensive philosophy. Rutgers is going to have to adjust that if they're going to continue to run the ball successfully. Red Raiders come out in the eye formation. Here's the give, second man through. That's Steve Williams, backup tailback, senior out of Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania, and he picks up about two yards. It'll be second down and eight. It's going to be tough going, very, very tough going for Colgate to go against the Rutgers defense. Colgate not that big in the offensive line, although Ubendorf, the tackle, is 270. The other players all in the 250 range. Rutgers much bigger than that and more physical on defense. Goodwin back to throw. Has time. Throws. Has a receiver. And that's good for a Colgate first down across the 40 to the 42-yard line. That's George Delaney, 5'11", junior, out of Hamilton, Massachusetts. And he has 79 career receptions for Colgate. Had a great game against Boston University for Colgate two weeks ago. Remember, they played two weeks, two weeks ago. He had six catches for 131 yards. That's a 21.8 yard per catch average. He's a big play guy, obviously. Six and a half remaining first quarter, and there's no score. Here's Goodwin. He gives second man through a huge hole again for Steve Williams as he busts across midfield. And the Red Raiders are on the move, so obviously they have picked up some momentum from that defensive stand. Well, it's been a beautiful lead block by the fullback. The backup fullback is in there, number 43, Joe Napoli, 5'10", 215, laid the wood to El Nardo Webster, one of Rutgers' better defenders. He took him out of the play. Isolation play, nobody blocks the linebacker until the fullback gets there. That's the key block Napoli made at that time. That's why it was successful. Second down. And about three. Goodwin throws. It is caught. Do they say he's in? They do. That reception is made at the 40-yard line. It's a Colgate first down. So here come the Red Raiders. And keep in mind, Rutgers ranked fourth in the nation in total defense. Gave up only 179 yards to Kentucky. Colgate moving the ball pretty well against them. Well, Colgate doing what we expected to see with Goodwin, who is a very mobile quarterback, rolling either left or right to avoid the center pressure from the Rutgers defense. Plus, that gives him a real clear line of vision to his receivers. They're executing their offense excellently. Williams has a huge hole and makes a cut across the 30-yard line to the 27. And again, a Colgate first down. And right now, Rutgers is being ripped up. Well, see, some of the things that you do the play previously can set you up for the play that you're doing now. With Goodwin doing that rollout, Rutgers really go into that motion. This time, Goodwin hands the ball back to Williams, cuts against the grain, and finds a huge hole. Remember, sometimes the things you do early set up what you'll do well much later on. First down and 10 for the Red Raiders. They're at the Rutgers 27, 
again. It's Williams looking to get outside, makes a nice move to avoid a would-be tackler and gets across the 25-yard line down near the 20. Well, poor tackling technique that time by Todd Lane, the big inside linebacker, put his head down. You can never put your head down, Lou. You always have to keep your head up. You can't tackle what you can't see. He was there, would have had Williams for a loss. Instead, he put his head down. The running back went right over the top of him for a real good gain on first down. So far, Steve Williams, the backup tailback for the Red Raiders, four carries, 28 yards, seven-yard average. Split backs behind Goodwin this time, and again, they'll go to the ground. And right now, they're just blowing huge holes in the Rutgers defense. Tom Norton from Braintree, Massachusetts, junior, 5'11", 182 pounds with another big gainer. And Colgate really on the march here, a first down and 10 at the Rutgers 14-yard line. Another good isolation block by Joe Napoli, number 43, taking down El Nardo Webster. That's the key block in a play like that. What you do is you want to isolate that linebacker, leave him unblocked, therefore the fullback must make the block. You see Norton, 114 yards rushing in his first game against BU. Good win to throw. Looks end zone, has a receiver incomplete. Out of the back of the end zone. And pretty good coverage offered by Rutgers. Looked to be the intended receiver, Dan McCarthy. It was Rusty Mays on the coverage for the Knights. Yeah, excellent defense that time by Rusty Mays. Rusty had a kind of a rocky start against Kentucky, playing a little bit conservatively. But he came on very, very strong in the second half of that game. That was good coverage that time by Rusty Mays. Never lost sight of the receiver. Stuck to him like the blue. The Rutgers fans kind of sitting on their hands at the moment. Not a whole lot to cheer about in this first quarter. They're probably a little stunned by what Division 1 AA Colgate has done so far. Here's Goodwin looking to throw. He fires end zone. It is incomplete. Two receivers in the same area and also three Rutgers defenders there as well. The tight end. Jeremy Garvey was there, along with George Delaney, so that probably was some kind of Colgate mix-up. Well, there was good defense, actually, that time by Rutgers all around. Pretty good pass rush, but you've got to get on a passer like Goodwin. If you let him sit there and just roll left and right, he'll pick you apart. What he was trying to do was take advantage of the height advantage that Jeremy Garvey had against the Rutgers defensive backs. Garvey, big tight end, big target, 6'4", 235. Goodwin just couldn't get the ball to him in the right position. Colgate about to start its 10th play of this drive. Goodwin in trouble, being flushed out by Miller. Throws, it is nearly intercepted, but caught. No, hit the ground. No, Look. they say incomplete. Rutgers with some good defense on that play, and then it was nearly caught by a Colgate receiver. Big Scott Miller was right in Goodwin's face, and that's what you have to do. When a guy's a pinpoint passer like Goodwin is, you can't give him the time to pick you apart. You have to force the action. Rick Brown is in to attempt a Colgate field goal. He was 0 for 1 in the first game against Boston University. He'll line up at the 21-yard line, so it will be a 31-yard field goal attempt. Snap is good. Kick is up. Kick is no good. Wide to the left. That brings the crowd into the game, Lou, and that's what the Rutgers defense needed. Now, offensive consistency Rutgers needs. They have looked good in spots, but they've got to put it all together. And Rutgers will come out on offense with three minutes and 52 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Rutgers using a lot of the two tight end set. They'll look to pound the ball at, at Colgate. Remember, a bigger, more physical offensive line. Sooner or later, that's going to take its toll, especially it's pretty warm today, Lou. You may not see it real early, but remember, once again, what they do now will help later on. John Murphy, the tight end in motion. Dorsey looked like he had an opening for a scant second and then was brought down at the line of scrimmage. He lunged forward for two. Second down and eight on the tackle was Giancy for the Red Raiders. You know, the Raiders are using a lot of players that didn't necessarily appear as first-teamers on our depth chart, which may mean a lot of different things. At this point, it would be just sheer speculation to talk about it. Might be a move by, uh, by the Colgate coaching staff to get a lot of fresh players in and rotate them as much as possible on a warm day. Here's the throw outside to Jenkins, the tight end, across the 25 to the 26. 
and Rutgers will be faced with another third down conversion opportunity. Matt Taylor, the cornerback, came up and played it well. He really did play well. Jenkins is a real big target at 6'2", 235 pounds. Taylor only 5'6", 162. So they're looking to isolate Taylor at the big tight end. Uh, just didn't work out well for Rutgers that time. That was a real nice tackle by the diminutive Matt Taylor. Third down and five. Ball marked at the 26. Tarver straight back to throw. He's in trouble. Steps up in the pocket now. Now he'll take off. He's got some running room. Makes a nice move and has a Rutgers first down across the 30 to the 33. Terrific, terrific move by Tom Tarver. Folks, that's athletic ability. You really can't coach that. Pretty good rush by Colgate. Tarver, once again, did not panic. Showed presence of mind. And one thing that's very important to see is he did look to pass first. When he didn't see an open receiver, the rush was coming. He pulled the ball down, made the good move, headed upfield, and got the first down. That is a good, heady play by Tom Tarver. First and ten for the Scarlet Knights. Ball marked at their own 33-yard line. T.K. Dorsey looks to get outside, and he turns the corner just a bit as he picks up maybe three on the play, a second down and seven. Rutgers in the one-back offense using two tight ends, something they did against Kentucky, and that, again, was because Kentucky was allowing that type of offense to be played against them, if you will. Today, I think Rutgers doing it, A, because it was so successful against Kentucky, but B, trying to pound the ball at Colgate a little bit, trying to wear them down as much as they can. Second down, seven. Here's the give. Jimmy Can has a nice opening, and again, he spins across the 40 up to the 42, and he really does that well. He really does, and that's because he's got great vision and quick feet, Lou. He, he's excellent for that. He's a, a superb athlete. We talked about the fact that he does play baseball for Rutgers. People say, well, what has that got to do with running the football? It means he's a good athlete. He, he has the athleticism, the skills that you need. He's got good vision and quick feet. He's banged up, though. Came off the sideline. It looks like he's limping pretty badly right now. Upstairs. 50 seconds remaining here in this first quarter. No score. Rutgers and Colgate. I formation. Tarver, play action. Hits Dorsey out of the backfield. He's across midfield to the 48. Bill Nash on the tackle, but a nice-looking play by the Knights. That's an excellent play, and that's a play that I think Rutgers should use quite often with the with a quarterback with the skills of a Tom Tarver who does run so well. That's kind of a that's a play pass option where the quarterback can either take the ball and run it up the field if the defense comes to him, he can dump it off to the fullback, which he did in that particular case. It's a very dangerous play, very very hard for a defensive back to defend. Should he play the run? Should he play the pass? They quite caught in between. That's a no-no for a defensive back. First and 10 for Rutgers. 20 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Here's Dorsey, and he makes a nice move and high steps his way to the Colgate 40-yard line. Jimmy Can banged up a little bit on the sideline. Looks like an ankle. They're taping it up right now. That's a problem when you spin sometimes, Lou. And that'll do it for the first quarter. So we have played one complete. Colgate and Rutgers, no score. Dear Terry, we saw the Grand Canal this morning. <laughs> Your mother cried. Who would have thought that a couple of Depression-era kids like us would be touring Europe? Larry and Sarah Hilliard are making most of the money they've earned with the help of the NatWest Prime Benefits Club for people 50 and over. This trip has meant so much. Miss you. Love, Dad. The Prime Benefits Club at NatWest. Raising the standards of banking. Thoroughbred Racing at the Meadowlands. The Meadowlands. We fill the place with winners ten times a night. The pain is in my very, very lower back. And it just 
aches. Today, Ray Stewart is trying extra strength Tylenol gel caps. For pain like his, why take aspirin or ibuprofen when nothing works better than Tylenol gel caps? The pain is totally gone. I have no pain in my back from now on. I'm going to take Tylenol gel caps for my pain. I truly feel it's amazing. Tylenol gel caps, only from Tylenol. For everyday pain, nothing works better. And for your allergies, now try Tylenol Allergy Sinus. General Business Machines presents the Hewlett-Packard Vectra family of personal computers. Quality performers for any business application. Earn points to win free peripherals. The remarkable LaserJet printer family with the finest 300 dot per inch print quality anywhere. Hewlett-Packard affordable inkjet printers. Stop in for a free demonstration of the new DeskJet 500 to qualify for the DeskJet 500 sweepstakes where you can win a trip for two to Hawaii. General Business Machines is your authorized full-service Hewlett-Packard dealer. Take advantage of our extensive inventory and fast delivery today by calling 1-800-339-7723. Now you see it. Now you don't. Sorry, nothing up there but sky. It's not just a new aircraft. It's a new technology called stealth. And it will make an airplane all but invisible to radar. So if you want a career in tomorrow's technology, take a close look at the Air Force. Because sometimes the biggest opportunities are the hardest to see. Still looking, sir. Aim high. Air Force. All over Central Jersey, people are staying off the roads, waiting for the end-of-year model clearance at Acura of Somerville. The wait is over. Acura of Somerville is clearing out all their 1990 Legends, all their 1990 Integras, all at the lowest prices of the year, and all with Acura of Somerville extras like free service loaner cars. But hurry, you can only get these end-of-year clearance prices while supplies last. So get back on the road and get big savings at Acura of Somerville's end-of-model year clearance. Acura of Somerville, Route 22 West, Bridgewater. Stadium penalty marker, Tarver throws, incomplete. Really, <laughs> Rutgers was, was kind of disorganized, which is very, very strange considering they were coming back after the, uh, the end of the first period, and they were totally disorganized. People moving kind of like in mass hysteria, looked a little like a Chinese fire drill. You know, you had second and short. Now you're going to be put yourself in a situation where you're, you move the ball back five yards, sets up a second and long situation. Poor execution that time by the Rutgers off offense. Just underway in the second. So far, Colgate has looked most impressive, both offensively and defensively. Well, they're a good ball club. We talked to Doug Graber at the press conference on Tuesday, and, and one of the reporters said, Coach, what's the difference between a 1A player and a 1-2A player? And he said, there are none. I've coached on the 1-2A level. And he said, on the first line players, there's no difference. In his mind, he believed that the difference was in depth. There weren't as many good players throughout the squad. But on the first level, he thought that the players were of equal ability. Colgate's showing that right now. Third down and two. At the 39, here's Dorsey, slips down, and also a penalty marker on the play. Turf's a little soft. I walked it before the game, Lou, and uh, it, it is a little bit soft. We'll have to wait and see what the penalty's all about. Illegal shift against the Scarlet Knights. So Rutgers with a couple of penalties here. Last week they had five penalties for 55 yards. 
And I know Doug Graber's not happy about this. Well, you know, the penalties last week were in a situation where they were really not hurting Rutgers. A situation like this, this type of penalty, definitely hurts Rutgers. Declined as, as Dorsey did not pick up the first down. So here, again, decision time. This time, Doug Graber decides to uh, punt it. And the Knights will go into punt formation. David Dunn, sophomore at Mount Vernon, New York, six punts a week ago for a 34.3 average. He had three kicks inside the 20. And he gets a good snap and a high kick. And again, it looks like it's going to go down. And Jenkins can't get it as it goes into the end zone. So Colgate will come out on offense. And there's a timeout on the field. 14 minutes, 37 seconds remaining. Second quarter, no score. Need to rent construction equipment? Call Trico Rentals. Backhoes, dozers, excavators, aerial work platforms, we've got those and more. Trico offers daily, weekly, or monthly rental plans, whatever suits your needs. Backed by 35 years of experience, equipment is delivered to your job in first-rate condition and ready to go every time. Because at Trico, uptime is the only time that counts. For the location near you, dial 1-800-GO-TRICO. It takes more than concrete and steel to keep New Jersey's economy strong. It takes resources, commitment, and teamwork. At First Fidelity, we're proud to have helped New Jersey become the home of hundreds of major corporations and two professional football teams. Our commitment to teamwork goes far beyond the gridiron. It comes through in everything we do. Let First Fidelity show you how we can team up to make great things happen for you. Colgate on offense with a first down and 10 after the Rutgers punt. Ball marked at the 20-yard line. No score just underway in the second quarter from Rutgers Stadium. Here's Goodwin back to throw. Flushed out of the pocket, has a receiver with a short gain. Joe Hopko, Goodwin, senior fullback, is across the 25 to the 26-yard line and actually did pick up six, so a second down of four coming up. Well, good play by Colgate. Some serious heat by Rutgers once again. They're getting some pressure on Goodwin, but he's got a lot of experience. He's got a lot of athletic ability, so he's not panicking. He's just rolling away from the pressure and then dumping the ball to a safety valve receiver, in that case, Hopko, for a good gain on first down. Here's the give up the middle. Steve Williams carried the football. And he's close to first down yardage. He'll be about a yard shy. Todd Lane, inside linebacker, makes the stop. That's that cutback play that's looked so good for Colgate. See, when you use that much motion, what happens, Lou, is you get the defense preconditioned to lean that way. As soon as they see that motion going away from them, they start leaning in that direction. When you cut back, what happens is you set up the blockers for an easy block that you can cut off of, and Colgate's doing it very successfully. Good-looking execution. Good one. Back to throw on play action. Now he's flushed out of the pocket and brought down. Play by number 94, Chris Jones, the right defensive end, the sophomore, 6'1", 260 pounds, and he showed some good speed there. Well, I thought he did against Kentucky as well. I mean, that's ancient history. We don't want to harp on that, but we had not seen Chris Jones before. And for a guy of his stature, 6'1", 260, he's very quick. Rory Crump, first team All-Patriot League punter. Kicks it straight up in the air, a high kick taken by Marshall Roberts at the 40, hemmed in, almost gets away. Rutgers will have pretty good middle position at the 40-yard line. He's pounding the turf because he knew that he was really one step away from turning the corner. You know, he's got a sore, a sore ankle and didn't play really at all last week and was very questionable for this week. So that's, I guess that's a good sign that he feels that strong and that good that he's kind of ticked off that he didn't break that tackle and turn the corner. And the Scarlet Knight himself trying to get the Rutgers football team pumped up here. No score in a game that Rutgers is pretty much expected to win. 13 minutes, 7 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Tarver to Bailey. 
Bailey with a nice cut. Shows some elusiveness as he's across midfield down to the Colgate 47. Excellent effort by William Bailey. You know, I tell you though, Lou, if he would have looked one hole wider, he may have been able to turn the corner without being touched by anybody. Bailey has to use his speed, and he has good speed, to turn the corner. That time he had a good block at the point of attack. Maybe he should have dipped his shoulder a little bit, then taken the ball wide. He, he wouldn't have gotten touched. Just see what he did last week. First and 10 at the 49. Fumble on the play, and the Red Raiders have it. Colgate on the recovery. Fumble by Rutgers and recovered by Colgate, number 90, James Moore. Moore with the fumble recovery. And the first big break of the game for There's Colgate. The play, there is a flag down on the play. This will be a big one. It's going to go against Rutgers. You can see all those heads down. Holding against the Scarlet Knights. And Colgate gets the football. Looked at that ball was just snapped right through Tarver's legs. I think he was bailing out just a little bit early. You know, this is very, very important right now. This is important series for Rutgers. Once again, we, we talked to Dave Graber, uh, excuse me, Doug Graber on Tuesday, and he said, listen, I don't want to see this team when it's up front. It's, it's easy to, to see a team like that. I want to see my young club when they're down, when things are going against them. I want to see how they react. That will be their truest test. Twin receivers are split out to the right side for Colgate. Here's Goodwin back to throw. He fires, has a receiver. Again, it's Williams coming out of the backfield. He's buried out of bounds at the 43, but picks up four on the play. And a second down and six coming up. Willie Wilkes, the strong safety, makes the tackle. Well, that's the kind of offense that Colgate has. They're, they're not a real big play offense. They're not going to get a lot real quick for you. What they're going to do is they're going to pick, they're going to choose. Goodwin has the ability to read defenses, defenses and dump the ball off to secondary and tertiary receivers. They have to be patient. Rutgers has to know that's part of their game plan. When they make the catch, they've got to come up and make the hit. Here's Goodwin to throw. Has a receiver. It's incomplete. Rusty Mays on for Number three, sting line of Colgate. So that's what I mean, Lou. That's what I was just talking about. Rutgers has to be a little bit patient, at least in the defensive secondary. They have to be aggressive in the, in the defensive line. But in the secondary, they've got to realize that Colgate's going to take a lot of those short routes. Whenever that happens, they've got to come up and make the stick, cause those receivers to drop the football once it touches their hands. Third and seven, Colgate on third down conversions, 0 for 3 in the game. One back behind Goodwin, and he's back to throw. He's in trouble, locks it up high, and what a catch by Delaney. And now you know why he's one of the all-time receivers at Colgate. Blitz was on by Jameel Jackson, almost got to Goodwin, but almost doesn't count, except horseshoes, tiddlywinks, hand grenades, etc., etc. Great, great catch that time by Delaney. Took advantage of his height advantage over Ron Allen. Ron Allen, who I think is an excellent defensive back because of his blazing speed, his only shortcoming is that he's 5'6". So Delaney at 5'11 is a giant in comparison, used his height advantage effectively. First down and 10. Here's the give to Norton, who makes a nice cut and then gets up near the 22-yard line. And the Red Raiders are on the march again. This is an outstanding offense. They're ranked seventh in the nation in passing offense, 299 yards per. Total offense, 13th, 431 yards per. So they get it done on the offensive side of the football. Yeah, and they can run the football too. You just saw the statistic on Norton last uh, two weeks ago, I should say, against BU. He was 23 for 114 yards. It's a 4.8 average. He's outstanding. He's good back. Good win. Back to throw. Again has a receiver this time. The receiver unable to hold on. That's Calistra. Back a fullback for Colgate. Tony Calistra, just a sophomore. It's interesting. Colgate, once again, using a lot of different players. And that's why there's that slight delay as we look up where some of these players are coming from because they're not listed in the first two or three players in the depth chart. So Coach Foley going very, very deep to his bench to get a lot of clean white shirts in there, getting a lot of players involved very early on in the ballgame. On third down 
And six, good wins to throw again, has a receiver again, the catch is made. And again, it's Delaney. He's inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. Willie Wilkes makes the tackle, but not before Colgate picks up another first down. Yeah, that, see, that's when you have a good receiver, an experienced receiver, made the great move and went beyond the stakes. A younger guy sometimes forgets where he is on the football field. Delaney has a lot of experience, and he showed it right there by making the good move in the right place. Colgate on the march. 10.53 remaining on the second. Here's Goodwin back to throw. And he just threw that one away. Intended for Delaney in the general direction of Delaney anyway. And a second down coming up for the Red Raiders. The blitz was on again. Outside linebacker Sean Williams coming from his right side. Jamil Jackson coming up the middle. Putting the pressure on Goodwin. But remember, experience again here is what really counts. Goodwin has been here before. Felt the rush threw the ball away to prevent the loss. That's heady quarterback play. Second down. At the 12-yard line, here's Goodwin to throw. Again, he rolls out right side, lets it go. It is nearly picked off, a fine defensive play. Knocked down in the end zone by Louis Beto, junior out of Union City who had a very fine game a week ago against Kentucky. Yeah, he came in for uh, Todd Lane, who was really bothered by a broken bone in his hand and wearing a soft cast. So Beto is getting a lot of playing time. Excellent defensive scheme by Rutgers that time. Good rush by Scott Miller. Caused Goodwin to throw the ball where he didn't want to throw it. Really threw it into traffic, and the defensive secondary coverage was there as well. That was a big, big defensive play by the Scarlet Knights. Third down and 10 at the 12-yard line. High formation for the Red Raiders. Here's the give up the middle. Williams is met at the line of scrimmage. And it's Jamil Jackson, number 41, and also Elnardo Webster coming up to make the stop. So Colgate forced into another fourth down situation. And Rick Brown trots in to attempt another field goal. He is 0 for 2 on the season. Missed one earlier. This one will be a 28-yarder with 10 minutes remaining here in the second quarter. The snap is good. The kick is up. It is good. Rick Brown with a 28-yard field goal. And a penalty marker is on the play. Flag down, though. So we'll talk about this. It's going to go against Colgate. They'll have to kick it again. That's the indication by Elnardo Webster. No, he's right. waving off the flag now, waving it off. <laughs> no, nope. good. Field goal is good. No penalty. So, a break in the action. Ten minutes, four seconds remaining in the second. Colgate three. Rutgers nothing. Tonight, thoroughbred racing at the Meadowlands. We fill the place with winners ten times a night. The end. Of the 1990 model year is the time for big savings for you. At the end of model year clearance at VIP Honda, you'll get the lowest prices of the year at VIP Honda on every 1990 Honda in stock for savings in the hundreds, even thousands of dollars. And VIP Honda still gives you free service loaner cars and guaranteed satisfaction. So don't wait, because these end of model year clearance prices are valid only while supplies last. At VIP Honda, Route 22 at Somerset Street, North Plainfield. Colgate will kick it off. They have the early lead, 3-0, with 10 minutes remaining here in the second quarter. It's a line drive kick, which may roll out of bounds and drive. So the Red Raiders will have to kick it again. In college football, you have the option also whether to take the ball at your own 35 or kick the ball again. Okay, That's what Rutgers will do. Rutgers with a good return team. They may want Colgate to kick it again. Ron Allen has shown in the past, especially in this stadium, he can uh, get on his horse and take off for you. Our ace statistician Tom Sharkey alongside with the stats on the drive. Nine plays, 36 yards. 
time elapsed, 2 minutes 39 seconds, and it ends with the Rick Brown 28-yard field goal. Hey, Rutgers got to wake up here a little bit, but don't be deceived. Okay. We talked to the Rutgers coaches, and they said this Colgate ball club is a good team. They don't make a lot of mistakes. We have to play error-free football. Don't be deceived that they come from a small school and play in a small division. Coach Graber knew that this would be a tough game. And so far, it's turned out to be that way. Here's Ron Allen. He's at the 20. He's to the 30. He's to the 40. Allen to the 50. He may go. He's at the 30. Ron Allen. Touchdown, Rutgers. I'll tell you, Lou, if I, had, if I had longer arms, I'd pat myself in the back. That's why Rutgers wanted Colgate to kick the ball again because Ron Allen is an outstanding kick returner, the fastest man on the Rutgers squad, certainly in the top two or three, if not the fastest, a high school sprinter with great breakaway ability in the open field. Excellent effort by Ron Allen, 82 yards. For Allen, that is his third career touchdown run on a kickoff. And Hanson in to kick the extra point. Kick is up. Kick is good. Just like that, the ball game. Nine minutes and 52 seconds standing to the second. Rutgers seven and Colgate three. Well, Ron Allen really gives you that dimension back there. Oh, he's very, very explosive. We talked about his speed as a defensive back. The only shortcoming that he has on the football field is he's a little bit small at five foot six, about 175 pounds. But he's tough. He's aggressive. He can fly. Let's give some credit to the Rutgers kickoff return team in general. Some very, very good blocking in the wedge at the point of attack. Allen only had to make one move, break one tackle, and then it was Green Acres. Ron Allen with that 82-yard kickoff return. He also returned one for 94 yards against Cincinnati in 1988. And then one we saw against West Virginia also in 1988. That one was 92 yards. I remember so he's, that. He's no stranger to long kickoff returns. And I believe that gave Rutgers a lead against West Virginia, if my memory serves me correctly, as you and I were doing that game, Lou, and that was a huge shot in the arm for Rutgers then. <laughs> Him well better be one right now also, because if this doesn't get you up, nothing will. Rutgers 7 and Colgate 3, as the Knights will tee it up. Benestat will do the kicking off. We were surprised to see Hansen in on the extra points and the field goals, only because Coach Graber said he didn't expect any personnel changes on the kick team, on the, on the extra point field goal team. But uh, obviously he has changed his mind. Well, he said they were going to work on a lot of things, and if personnel changes were necessary, they were going to make them, and they did. Benestat kicks it high and very deep. It goes back to Williams in the three. You, you read my mind. My God, I tell you, what the, he had rockets on his heels that time. He came in unblocked and aggressively made the tackle. He looked like a missile that time. You won't see too many better open field tackles than that. Williams is an explosive runner. Last year he had a long touchdown run for Colgate. He's, he's an explosive guy who can really shake it, so that was a great play by Bellamy. Right now the Red Raiders are hemmed in at their six-yard line. Give up the middle, nothing doing. Tom Norton brought down at the line of scrimmage. Scott Miller in on the tackle. Big Scott Miller, we talked about him in the pregame. He can dominate a football game. He's big enough, he's quick enough, and he's mean enough to do so. He's coming off that knee injury from a little over a year ago. Played tentatively last year, I think, because of the knee injury. He's feeling 100%, and he's playing like it. Well, Joe Schiavone went across the line of scrimmage and penalty markers on the play. I have to say whether Nick Verbitsky, the center, moved. I don't think so. Not I don't time. think so. I tell you, that's going to make Arnold Jeter the defensive line coach for Rutgers crazy. I watched them practice, and I watched Coach Jeter work with his defensive linemen, and uh, and they like him, and he likes his players, I'll tell you. And that's, that's got to make you crazy. The nose tackle is right 
there right on top of the football. He's got to be able to see the movement of the ball before he makes his reactive move to that. Second down, and call it six. Good win to throw. He's looking. He fires long and has his receiver. Catch is made inbounds. The catch is made, and the reception good. It's Mike Ryan on the reception for Colgate. The Red Raiders are utilizing a lot of different receivers. Really, and again, in a, in a sense, to apologize, is there's, a, there's a momentary lapse as we look at our depth chart to, to look for some of these players. You know, you memorize the first two or three players you might see, certainly the first two, but after you go down that depth chart, you don't expect to see a lot of these players. Colgate right now using a lot, a lot of different players on virtually every player. But you can see in this first half that that Colgate passing game is superb. And the running game not too bad either right now as Joe Hopko, the fullback, has some good yardage across the 40-yard line. Well, a good block that time by the pulling tackle, the left tackle that time. Jim Bubendorf pulled it. That's a, that's a, that's a load to move. 270 pounds pulled from his left tackle spot to lead that play. Got a nice block on Jamil Jackson that, that sprung the back for some good yardage. Well-conceived offensive game plan for Colgate. Second down. And three. Good win to throw. Now he looks to the right. He throws. Has a receiver, but it's incomplete. Intended for Dan McCarthy, the 5'8 senior out of Quincy, Massachusetts. Real good coverage that time, though, by Rusty Mays, number 20. Goodwin really threw that ball away. There was nowhere to go with it. It was either going to take, he was either going to take the sack or throw the interception. Again, one of the reasons why he's third on the all-time Colgate passing list is because he's good. He doesn't make plays like that. He didn't take the sack. He didn't throw the interception. He threw the ball away. You mentioned Colgate ranked. Keith preseason in the Division I AA football poll. We're trying to break as a timeout is called by the Red Raiders. We'll keep it here. They're trying to break, actually not trying today, but last week in BU, they broke a 12-game road losing streak, so they've had some, their woes on the road. It's difficult to play on the road, especially for college kids. You've got classes, you've got studies to do, lots of things on your mind. You've got to take off earlier. You're playing in front of hostile crowds. Sometimes it's, it's really just isn't that easy to, to win on the road. It, it isn't on any level, and particularly on the college level. There's a good panoramic view of Rutgers Stadium. Rutgers leading Colgate 7-3. 7.55 remaining here in the second quarter. Colgate is in its 100th season of collegiate football. They have a great tradition, as does Rutgers. And, you know, head coach Doug Graber is one for tradition. He loves looking up the old rivalries that Rutgers is involved in, and he knows that uh, this ranks right up there with, uh, with the best. Well, one of the reasons he decided to become a college head coach coming from the pro coaching ranks was because he loved the pageantry and the history involved with college athletics. One of the first things that he did when he came to the Rutgers campus was to visit with all the students. There's Mike Foley for Colgate, 7-16 and 16 for his career, but, but he's, he's building himself a little powerhouse. It took some time, but he's getting there. Third down and two. Incomplete. And no flag. Intended for McCarthy and Rusty Mays in on the coverage. So a fourth down coming up, and the Red Raiders will have to kick it away. Another fine defensive play by Rusty Mays. He has really come a long way since the first quarter of that Kentucky game last week. He's a fine defensive player. Crump is in there. Two punts on the afternoon. 40-yard average. And again, he's a good one. A senior out of Friendswood, Texas. Here's a high punt, and Roberts field on the run, and then goes up the sideline. I don't know what he did. Stepped out. He stepped out of stepped bounds. Out of bounds. He was upset. That's what it was. Yeah. He was making some kind of gesture. I thought he was putting on some kind of new juke move. <laughs> <laughs> I saw what a bizarre maneuver maybe, by maybe, Roberts. I know, maybe he juggles, too, because that's what he was doing on the sideline. See, I, obviously, he heard the whistle. We're too little, a little too far away from that. But then I saw the official waving it off that he had stepped out of bounds at about the 43 yard line. That's what that was all about. All right, now that we've, we have recovered from that, first down and 10 for Rutgers. 
at their own 43-yard line. It was a 30-yard kick and a 13-yard return. Tarver play action over the middle to the tight end, James Jenkins. And that a very effective play across midfield to the 47 and the strong safety, Rich Burke, on the tackle. Well, that's what Rutgers has to start, start doing, not only completing passes, but doing it on first down, Lou. Rutgers was starting to get a little predictable. First down run, second down run, third down pass. It's nice to mix it up a little bit. That time, a little bit of play action, a little delay pattern by the tight end coming across the middle. Good job of hiding the ball by Tom Tarver. Well-executed play for the Scarlet Knights. One back. Behind Tarver on the first down. That back is Dorsey who is hit and falls down. TK having some trouble with his footing here today. Well, this is a natural surface. I walked the surface before the game, and it is soft. We had a, quite a bit of rain overnight. Hellacious thunderstorms woke me up about 5 o'clock this morning. Couldn't, could, couldn't get back to sleep, uh, but uh, the, the, the field is a little bit soft and a little bit wet, particularly in some areas, and, and that's going to be a problem before the day is over. Second down and 10, I formation. Chris Brantley is wide to the left. And Tarver play action. He's looking now. He jitterbugs a little bit. Goes out of bounds. And a penalty marker on the play as well. We may get a holding call here against Rutgers. This game a lot different than last week's game against Kentucky. Rutgers has scored but seven points with six minutes remaining in the first half. Last week they scored 21 in the second quarter, and clipping is the call against the Knights. Remember, you can't do that behind the line of scrimmage. You have a you have a two-yard cushion on either way of the, of the line of scrimmage, depending on where you are. Talking about your interior linemen, of course, now are allowed to block at the knees and, and sometimes from behind because things get so tight at the line of scrimmage. But once you get beyond that two-yard zone, you've got to stay off the guy's legs from behind. Rutgers did not do that that time. That's the big penalty. Tarver was looking to go downfield that time to Guarantano. Excellent coverage by Colgate's Bill Nash. Had nowhere to throw the ball. Every receiver was covered. We didn't hear that much against about, excuse me, the Colgate defense. But they looked very, very good here today. They're doing what they said they would do. Not give up the big play. Third down and call it 16 for Rutgers. Twin receivers out to the left side. It's Brantley and also Guarantano. Melton out to the right. Another penalty marker down. Tarver has Guarantano at the 30 to the 25 and down to the 22-yard line. But again, this one may come back. It's a flood pattern to the left side. Rutgers overloading the zone and Guarantano finding the seam. Nicely thrown ball by Tarver, but I think it's all going to come back. Ouch. That hurts. The illegal procedure against Rutgers and the Knights are killing themselves with penalties here today. Well, we talked about it against Kentucky, five penalties. You never want to have that many, but they were in situations that didn't really hurt the ball club. Today, just the opposite. Rutgers making costly penalties at the worst possible moment. Look for Rutgers to come back to that play, though, because it was wide open and really, really well executed. They overloaded the zone, and they got that time Guarantano isolated on the linebacker in the seam of the zone. So look for Rutgers to take advantage of a mismatch like that again later in the ballgame. And moves the ball way back to the Rutgers 44-yard line. Two penalties for 10 yards. Three others were declined for Rutgers. So five penalties already here in the first half. They had a total of five against Kentucky last week. Tarver to throw. Now he's in trouble. Let's it go. It's intercepted. Threw into coverage that time and TJ Donahue picked it off for Colgate. He threw into heavy coverage that time. He felt the pressure from the defensive end. Moore was breathing down his neck. Moore and Critchbaum were right there for him, but he did have some time, but he hurried the throw a little bit right into the arms of T.J. Donnie. Donnie was playing an excellent ball game. 7-3, Rutgers leads it. Six minutes remaining here in the second quarter. That was Tarver's first interception on the season. Didn't throw any last week in the first here today. 
I formation for Colgate. Here's the give to the second man through. That's the tailback, Steve Williams, who has had a number of carries here in this first half. Marty Mays, the nose tackle, makes the play. Mays had an excellent game last week against Kentucky. Well, if you're going to run the football up the middle, you've got to get the nose tackle blocked. That time they did. Marty Mays made a nice play. Once again, Colgate getting people moving. They know they're not the bigger ball club, so what they do is they try to take advantage of balancing and position that way. So they get the Rutgers defense moving and then cut back. You just saw Pat Flaherty, the offensive line coach for Rutgers, going over some things with the Rutgers offensive line. Here is Goodwin, back to throw, has protection, throws, it is knocked away, and a fine defensive play by Todd Lane, the sophomore inside linebacker, Goodwin playing with a broken hand. Intended for Ryan. Broken up by Todd Lane. Tarver talked to the uh, coaching staff upstairs. Last week, a good game, as we mentioned, two touchdown passes. But last week is ancient history at this at, at, at this point in this game. It's it's that 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 whole thing is mute. A big third down play for the Rutgers defense coming up right here, Lou. Very quiet crowd here at Rutgers today. Good win to throw. Has a receiver. Catch is made. Hans Ottenot makes the catch. He's an interesting ca uh, <laughs> character, Hans Ottenot. You know, I was doing my research and getting all the players together, and I looked, and I said, oh, Hans, that's, a, that's an unusual name for a football player. And I noticed that he was the backup flanker, and then I went over the defensive and I saw, uh, players, and I saw another Hans, and I said, wow, two Hanses on the, on the same team. How unusual. And then I realized it wasn't a different player. It was Hans Ottenut. He's also a backup defensive back also. Must be a good athlete. A two-way player. Too, too many of that. Here's a give up the middle to the 41-yard line. Steve Williams, who really has gotten the bulk of the carries for Colgate here in this first half. Rutgers doing a lot of arm tackling, especially on the line of scrimmage. They've really got to stop doing that. They've got to be more aggressive about their tackling and throw some bodies around, which they did do against Kentucky. They had gang tackling last week. This week, although the, the, the defense certainly is not getting massaged by any means, they have to group tackle, gang tackle more. Second down. Play action. Good win to throw, and good coverage on the corner, Ron Allen for Rutgers. It was intended for Dan McCarthy to split in. Well, last week, we saw a lot of what Doug Graber likes to term smash face football. We haven't seen too much of it here in this first half from the Scarlet defense. No, not at this point, and a lot of the credit has got to go to Colgate. They really have Rutgers just a little bit off balance. That's good coaching, and Doug Graber was very, very certain that Colgate would come in as a well-coached ball club. He made that very clear to us, Luke. Third down, good win to throw, has a receiver coming out of the backfield. It may be enough for first down yardage, maybe just a yard shy. I don't know about that. That was a great defensive play by the linebacker. The, the pass was to Garvey. But Louis Beto did a great job of dragging Garvey down. I think well, it's going to be real close. I think it's going to depend on the spot. I don't know. I really don't know. They will bring the chains all the way across the field. Four minutes and ten seconds remaining in this second quarter of bright, sunshiny day in Piscataway, New Jersey. Rutgers Stadium and a pretty good crowd on hand to see Rutgers at Colgate. And Colgate is short. By about a half a yard. Well, that looks to be Jimmy Can. Foot banged up a little bit. Looks to be the ankle, Frank. Yeah, when that shoe is off and that ice bag is on, that's not a good sign. Although he hasn't taken his shoulder pads off, so we may see him in the second half. But generally, when the player is there without a shoe on, <laughs> that's a bad sign. If it wasn't a real serious ankle injury, they would just leave the shoe on and put the ice with an ace bandage right over the top of it so that he could come in on certain plays. But if that shoe was off, I don't know. Colgate calls another timeout. 
The undefeated Electric Team, right? Four minutes, ten seconds remaining here in this second quarter. Well, I ask you some surprise by anything in the first half. Well, you know, I have to be honest, Lou. Nothing else if, if not honest. And I really thought that after last week's performance that Rutgers would come in here charged up. They're playing in their own stadium for the first time. Um, got, got the season off well with, with the big win, and I thought they would ride that momentum. However, I have to make it very, very clear. We, we do our homework. We do our research. I talked to Rich Rachel, the defensive coordinator for Rutgers. I talked to Stan Paris, the offensive coordinator, Doug Graber, and each and every one of them said, Frank, this game is going to be tough. Don't be deceived that this is a small college and a small college program. He said, they're bigger than they're listed in the press guide, and they execute well. They're so well coached. They just don't make his mistakes, and they're very, very experienced. You can see some of the looks on the Rutgers players' faces on the bench. You can tell they're a little bit perplexed about this first-half performance so far. Well, we have still have a, a whole second half to go. We've got four minutes left to play here in the first half. This is a big fourth down situation for Rutgers right now. They've got, they better get up. Both teams dig in at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down and less than one. Goodwin will throw. And he has a receiver. That's a first down play for the Red Raiders as Goodwin finds Ryan for the first down. How about that play? Well, pretty well covered that time by Willie Wilkes, but a well-thrown ball. He threw it in the only spot where it could be caught, right in the bread basket. He only had to go about a yard and a half, and what a well-executed play. They weren't looking for five or six yards. They only needed one. They got two. That's what an experienced ball club will do for you, Lou. They're well-coached. They really are. First down and 10 for Colgate at the 33-yard line. Here's the give to Williams, who breaks one tackle and then spins into Malik Jackson coming up from his free safety position. Pickup of about four, though, and a second down and six coming up. Ball marked up to 28. Nice job by Greg Kuchar, number 65, the starting left tackle, pulled and led the back through the hole. The strong safety, Willie Wilkes, was sitting right in the hole, but not for long as Kuchar blew him out of there. Steve Williams says 46 yards rushing. Rutgers last week gave up a total of minus 7 yards rushing against Kentucky. So Colgate's getting it done on the ground. Here's the give again to Williams. Looks to get outside and shows some good speed as he's across the 20-yard line. That's good enough for a Colgate first down. I'd say a lot of movement in the Colgate offensive line. And I'm talking about positive movement, not illegal motion. Shane Bickle, the big right tackle at 6'2", 256, pulled from his tackle position, went down the line of scrimmage, and led the back through the hole again. These big offensive linemen, they're not huge, they're good size, but they are very quick and they execute. First down and 10 at the 20-yard line. Three minutes remaining in the second. Good one throws, and another nice catch. This one made by Hot Knot, the junior out of Miami, Florida. Well, I tell you, I, I hope people are watching the line play of Colgate because they're executing so well. That moving pocket that they have is just absolutely fantastic. Man, are they executing at the line of scrimmage. That's what's really going on here. It's not that Rutgers is playing that poorly. Second down. And five at the 20, excuse me, at the 15-yard line. Two and a half remaining in the second quarter. And it gives to Williams, who just bursts off tackle and spins down to the 10-yard line. And right now, that Colgate offensive line is taking over. Another terrific block by number 71, Shane Bickle. Another great block by number 75, Tim Brown. They are really executing. Once again, they're not gigantic. They go 270, 260, 250, 250, 256. Not midgets by any means, but not an overpowering offensive line in terms of size. So what do they do? They make it up with execution. First down. And actually first and goal just inside the 10-yard line. Two minutes remaining in the second quarter. And Colgate has an opportunity to punch one in. Here's Goodwin. He throws and by Ron Allen. Fine defensive play intended for the Gates' leading receiver, George Delaney. 
Terrific job of anticipation by Ron Allen. He was actually beaten on the play into the corner, but he used his outstanding speed. You saw it on the, on the long kickoff return to recover, then leap at the right time. Great sense of anticipation, great comeback by Ron Allen. Here comes Colgate again. They'll line up with a second down and goal. Ball marked just inside the 10. the right throws incomplete had a man open too he missed his tight end and a penalty marker on the play as well That's intended the for the tight end Garvey Todd Lane offered the, the coverage and again the penalty marker at the goal line it's going to be defensive holding against Rutgers I think in the secondary that would be a big big break for Colgate and indeed it is defensive holding and this will give Colgate, an automatic first down. And you can hear in the background not much noise coming out of that Rutgers crowd. No, Rutgers, Rutgers stands look like an oil painting right now. There's really not all that much going on. They're really stunned. It's an automatic first down. 13th play coming up in this Colgate drive. And they're looking to punch a score in right before the end of the first half. Well, I tell you, that was the first real miss that Goodwin has had. Most of the other misses, he's really just kind of thrown the football away, to tell you the honest truth. That time, Garvey was wide open, did a little square out into the flat, and he was there. Goodwin just couldn't get him the football. Look for, once again, for Colgate to go back to that. And Colgate takes yet another timeout. So a minute 47 remaining here in this second quarter. 7-3 Rutgers, but Colgate has looked most impressive. Keep in mind Rutgers only points coming on that long kickoff return. It's all in the execution. That's what experience will do for you. You know, Colgate returned 10 of 11 starters. We didn't talk about that in the opener because you just don't really have that much time. The opening, I should say. Colgate is an extremely experienced offensive ball club. They return 10 of 11 players. When you have that kind of material to work with, boy, what a pleasure for a coach. That's why Colgate, one of the better offensive clubs in Division I AA. The last Colgate win at Rutgers Stadium was way back in 1978. Talking about way back. It wasn't really way back, but it was back in 1970. And that was a 14-9 Colgate victory. I guess one of the most famous games I remember in this rivalry, Frank, was the Rutgers-Colgate game played at Giant Stadium on Thanksgiving night back in 1976. Colgate was having an excellent season, as was Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights were going for an undefeated season. And they did defeat Colgate by the score of 17-9. That was a terrific ball game. No, I was there. Telecast. I was at Giants Stadium, and it was a terrific game. If not for a controversial call on a fumble punt, Rutgers may have lost that ball game. And they give it up the middle. Tom Norton on the carry for Colgate gets just a couple. We saw prior to that offensive play a couple of uh, spectators here. One of them was Daryl Smith of the Rutgers basketball team hanging out and watching the football team in action. Well, the athletes like to support one another and I think it's very important that they do. A minute 20 remaining here in this first half and Colgate four yards away from taking the lead. Rutgers has to really dig in here. They might want to give him three, but if they could go in without giving him up six, that'd be a big boost for their defense. Here's Goodwin looking to throw. Rolls out. Left side. Still looking. Now turn it in. in. He's in. Touchdown, Colgate. He caught Malik Jackson in indecision that time on the corner. He was holding the football up. Jackson wasn't sure whether he would throw it and run. But then once Jackson, made the, once Jackson made the commitment to play the run, he should have come up and forced much harder than he did. He let Goodwin take the action to him instead of vice versa. Defensive back can never, ever do that. Rick Brown will attempt the extra point as Colgate has taken the lead. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 
so with one minute and two seconds remaining here in the first half, Colgate has taken the lead by the score of 10 to 7. Impressive drive. Yes, by an impressive ball club. And I think a lot of the, the Rutgers faithful here, one of the reasons why they're down is because Rutgers, within the last few years anyway, has traditionally started out pretty strong with some high expectations. They've not disappointed early, only to fade against teams that, that certainly the supporters felt anyway that Rutgers should beat. And I think they're saying, oh, no, here we go again. You know, we had the big win last week against Kentucky. What the heck is going on? But you can't lose the faith. It's still, still a minute left to play here in the first half and a whole second half to go. All right, the drive, 14 plays and very evenly distributed. Seven via the pass, seven on the ground, 58 yards. Four minutes, 48 seconds, and Goodwin with the three-yard touchdown run to cap it off. All right, with a minute remaining after Rutgers receives the kick. What would you expect the Scarlet Knights to do here? Well, they'll try to put it up? It's going to depend on the field position, I think, Lou. If they can get a good return out of their kick team, yeah, then I think they should. But if they get poor field position, I think they'll play it more conservatively. Here's Ron Allen at the 20. 30. And Colgate will have no part of Ron Allen this time as they bring him down across the 34-yard line. So Rutgers goes out on offense. And they have 56 seconds remaining here in the second quarter with which to work. Well, with this is decent field position starting at their own 35-yard line, 34-yard line. It's, it's something they can certainly work with. Let's see what kind of last-minute offense Rutgers has put together so far this year. They didn't have to use it last week. They certainly had to try it now. Receivers are split out to the left side. You have twins out there, Brantley. And also Warren Tano. Tarver dumps it off to Antoine Moore. Back to fullback who makes a terrific move and gets across the 39 yard line. Wanted to try to take that ball out of bounds, but Colgate had him hemmed in pretty good, so we did the next best thing, put his head down and got what he could get. Second and five, Tarver to throw. As a receiver. This time it's turned back in by Randy Jackson. So Jackson's first reception of the game. He has a Rutgers first down and a hurry-up offense for the Scarlet Knights. Just 26 seconds remaining. And Tarver calls timeout, and he'll come over and talk to Doug Graver. Second timeout for Rutgers. Remember now, again, people have to watch a game in the, in the context of the bigger picture. Colgate's going to give Rutgers some of those inside eight- and nine-yard turnarounds. Why not right now the... The clock certainly a bigger enemy to Rutgers than Colgate is in this particular situation. So what they'll do is they'll let them catch those little turn-in plays, then bring them down, hope the clock keeps running. And this is learning under fire for the Rutgers offense. This is a young offensive unit. And as you mentioned, they didn't have the opportunity to work on this last week against Kentucky. So a chance to see what they're made of in the two-minute drill. Well, this is the kind of game that I think Doug Graber wanted to see his young players in. He, he wanted to see them tested, and they are certainly being tested here today. He said, listen, Frank, you, you've got to realize, you, you, when you have a win like we had against Kentucky, you're never as good as you think you are. You, you haven't played as well as you think you played. And the converse is true sometimes. When things go bad for you, you're not as bad as you, as you, as you think you were. I, I need to see a happy middle ground somewhere. I need, to, I need to see this team tested to see how they respond to adversity. I need to see when they're down by 3 points, 6 points, 10 points, how are they going to respond to that? Well, here's their opportunity, Lou. First and 10. At the 49-yard line of Rutgers, Scarlet Knights with just 26 seconds remaining here in this first half. Lone back behind Tarver is Moore, and he makes the catch coming out of the backfield, and he's upended at the 48-yard line. And a very fine defensive play for Colgate coming up with Mike Jasper inside linebacker. Just 12 seconds, and the clock is winding down, and Tarver may have to throw up the long one here. He's straight back to the throw. This should end the first half. He's going to have to run it all the way in now. Here's Tarver. He's out of bounds, and that will end the first half. 
So, one half of football complete at Rutgers Stadium. Your score at halftime is Colgate 10 and Rutgers 7. We'll be back with halftime activities and second half action in just a few moments. Welcome back to Rutgers Stadium. Lou Brogno along with Frank Labono here at halftime. The score Colgate 10 and Rutgers 7. In the background, you might hear some of the ceremonies that are going on down on the field. It's Hall of Fame Day here at Rutgers University. And uh, 10 people in all, former players, some coaches here at Rutgers, being inducted into the Rutgers football Hall of Fame. It's got to be a great day for them. Oh, yeah, what a neat thing. Why, I, I mean, to ever be considered for any kind of honor after you're done playing is always terrific. And, and because Rutgers has such a rich history and tradition, it makes it just that much nicer. All right, let's take a look at the list of some of the people who are being inducted today into the Hall of Fame. We start off with Thomas Turner Barr, class of 1913. You remember that year, right, Frank? Even before my yeah. time. <laughs> David, T, David T. Bender is the class of 1925. John DeWitt, 1886, and of course uh, the long history of Rutgers goes back to 1869 with collegiate football. Jim Dumont, outstanding defensive player, 1984. Well, you know, he and his brother Bob, they were both walk-ons, which means they were not scholarship players. Jim Dumont was 170 pounds when he walked on at the Rutgers campus to play football, bulked himself up to about 225 pounds, was good enough to be an All-East selection. He was drafted by the Cleveland Browns. Later played in the USFL, a, a terrific player with a, with a great story. Harvey J. Harmon was a head coach here at Rutgers and one of the winningest coaches at Rutgers University. Ed Jones, fine player, 1975. Yeah, he was eventually drafted by the Dallas Cowboys uh, the year after they had drafted Ed Too Tall Jones, so he became Ed Too Small Jones. And uh, that had nothing to do with his playing ability. It was uh, everything to do with his size, about 5'10", 5'11", or so. And he was a great player. And, and the fact that he was drafted by Dallas proves that. Also, Jim Monahan, class of 19. 52. Rich Policastro, one of the great Rutgers quarterbacks and, of course, a central New Jersey resident, most recently color commentator for the Rutgers Football Radio Network. He also will be inducted today. Robert Sims and Big Train Tranovich. Those are the inductees into the Rutgers Football Hall of Fame. I know that all a day that all Rutgers football fans enjoy immensely. We're at halftime. The score is Colgate 10 and Rutgers 7. Back with a look at first half statistics and second half action in just a few moments. And then week out, and that's something that would do wonders for the Rutgers program. There was a short delay as we were preparing to get ready for the third quarter because of the Hall of Fame ceremonies, which we spoke about before. We just heard that Rutgers cannon shooting off in the corner. You think uh, I got a shot there, Lou? I'm a Rutgers graduate. I'm, I'm putting my plug in right now uh, for the Hall of Fame. Frank, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> Well, hey, listen, if I don't talk myself up, nobody else will. <laughs> Rutgers will kick off to begin quarter number three, and they find themselves down by three points. They'll be moving right to left on your screen, and Colgate sends receivers back to the five-yard line. One of those deep receivers is number seven, Pan Hocknot. And the other man for the Red Raiders appears to be number 27, Joe Martin. John Benestad is also number 27. We'll kick off on the Scarlet Knights. And the third quarter is just about ready to get underway. It's a high short kick taken by Ottenot at the 15. He's to the 20 and slammed down again by Jay Bellamy. Lewis, making a name for himself on special teams. Lou, when you see a hit like that, you look at the press box and you see everybody flinch because the impact was incredible. That's what you call a collision. Man. Colgate, first down and 10 at the 24-yard line. Red Raiders come out behind quarterback Dave Goodwin. He hands it off up the middle. Steve Williams has a nice cut, and he's into open field across the 40 and brought down. 
down at midfield. That abounds by Rusty Mays, but a nice cut by the senior tailback, Steve Williams. The same play that was so effective for them in the first half. Motion going to the left, then the cutback run to the right. Let's watch it on the replay. See the influence of the offensive lineman. They all move to the left. Then Williams' good vision makes the hard cut to the right as the play is sealed off. Makes a nice run in the open field. Great way for Colgate to start the second half. First down and 10 at the 49. Here's the give. But Rutgers plays it well this time. Coming up to make the play. Mike Conley, number 95. Back up outside linebacker. That's the way that Rutgers has to stuff the run. Take a look at Joe Hopko there, the senior from Endicott, New York. But that play just never got going. It was much too slow in developing. Gave the Rutgers linebackers the opportunity to read the play and stuff the hole. And the Red Raiders with a second down and nine right at midfield. Again, they go up the middle. It's Tom Norton who carries this time. Leonardo Webster in on the tackle for Rutgers. Norton with 114 yards rushing a week ago. Just not enough. I'm sorry, Luke. Go ahead. Forget. Oh, okay, I'll take it. All right, then I will. It's all yours. <laughs> Just not enough of a push on the offensive line that time, which gave Elnardo Webster time to, to pinch in from his outside linebacker position and make the tackle. That's where your offense, excuse me, your defensive interior linemen are not necessarily making the tackle, but they're making the play. Third down and seven. Colgate at the Rutgers 47. Twin receiver split left. Goodwin gets away from a would-be tackler. It's intercepted. It's picked off by Malik Jackson, and he can thank his brother Jamil for this one. It will be a Rutgers touchdown. But there are penalty markers on the play, and they may call this one back. I think the interception will stand, Lou, but I think they're going to call the touchdown back. Jamil Jackson came in and hit Dave Goodwin, and as Jamil came in, Malik picked it off. Well, that's, 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 a, that's, brother, that's brothers helping out each other. Yeah, really, huh? that's definitely brotherly love, and it was a great play by both of the Jacksons. But the touchdown is certainly going to come back. They're walking it back right now, and it looks like Colgate's offense is going to keep the football, so they may wave off the interception. Another big penalty against Rutgers. Uh, wipes out a 57-yard interception return. And the Rutgers fans, as you can hear in the background, are obviously not happy with the call. Let's see what the call is. Pass interference. They're going to call interference against Rutgers. That's an automatic first down for Colgate. Remember, even though Goodwin was in danger of being sat, if that ball was not touched, if that ball was not touched, then you have to play it as if it were a regular pass play. You cannot interfere with the receiver. If it would have been touched by the defender, then you can knock the receiver down and go for the football. Just underway in the third. Colgate on the march again. But this time, Rutgers banging hard on defense. Webster comes up to make the hit. Elnardo Webster met him in the hole the way a linebacker is supposed to. Tom Norton carried the football, and he was shaking up on that. Yeah, he's shaking the cobwebs out, but he really got stuck by Elnardo Webster. A second down and nine upcoming for the Red Raiders. Ball marked at the 43-yard line. Here's the pitch outside Williams. Now he cuts it back in, but is brought down from behind. And again, another fine play by Tom Lane, who's doing the job from his inside linebacker position. Well, that's what he has to do, Lou, is he's got to be able to play from the offside, hold his position. What's happening is that Colgate is taking advantage of Rutgers' over-aggressiveness by cutting back against the grain. What Rutgers has going to have to do is play aggressive towards the motion and assignment football away from the motion. And there's a timeout on the field as there is a player shaken up on the far side. So we will take a break. 12-21 remaining, Colgate 10, Rutgers 7. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, what do we have here? I call it bank tellers. Oh, well, you'd have to take it further. They're too friendly. What do you mean? Well, haven't you ever dealt with a teller? This window is closed. <laughs> there is no record of your deposit. <laughs> hey, I'm on break now. You understand? The tellers at my bank aren't anything like that. Well, where do you bank? In the enchanted forest? <laughs> no. West, raising the standards of banking. Are you okay? I think I got whiplash. And a concussion. Every now and then, life hits you with some very sour notes. And doctor bills can really add up. At MetLife, we do all we can to pay your thing promptly. Get Met. It pays. Well, Lee Jackson just made an outstanding defensive play as Colgate Pull back Joe Hopko, and he picked up about five yards, but not enough for a Red Raider first down, so it's fourth down, and Rory Crump is in to punt for Colgate. That keep goes Marshall Roberts inside the 10-yard line. Here's the kick, it's a high arcing punt that travels into the end zone. And Rutgers will get the ball at the 20-yard line. And with 11 minutes and 27 seconds remaining here in this third quarter, we will have another timeout. The score, Colgate 10, Rutgers 7, and a timeout on the field. We'll be right back. It takes more than concrete and steel to keep New Jersey's economy strong. It takes resources, commitment, and teamwork. At First Fidelity, we're proud to have helped New Jersey become the home of hundreds of major corporations and two professional football teams. Our commitment to teamwork goes far beyond the gridiron. It comes through in everything we do. Let First Fidelity show you how we can team up to make great things happen for you. up the middle and he picks up literally no yardage at all as he's brought down at the line of scrimmage second down and 10 for Rutgers 11 minutes remaining in the third quarter I'd like to see Rutgers go with that play action pass a little bit more on first down though I think it could be effective for them Colgate 10 Rutgers 7 in case you just joined us here's Dorsey looking to cut it in Powers his way across the 25, maybe to the 26-yard line. A good pickup of five or six yards, but Rutgers faces with another third down conversion. Could he, pretty good block that time at the point of attack by the uh, tight end, John Murphy. Murphy, a, a converted quarterback, doing a nice job as the blocking tight end. Doesn't, doesn't get a lot of, of credit because he's, he's not a, a, a real big pass receiver, doesn't catch many balls, but he's an excellent blocker and doing a good job. Third down and five. Tarver back to throw. Looking, has protection now. He scoots out of the pocket. Moves to the right. Fires. Has the receiver. First down. Rutgers just short of the midfield strike. And it looks to be Dorsey on the catch. A great job by T.K. Dorsey out of the backfield. He came back to the football. He was wide open. The ball was not well thrown, but Dorsey made the adjustment on it, came back to the football to make a clutch catch. First and 10 for Rutgers at the 49-yard line. Off tackle across midfield and down to the 47th. Try to cut off the block of Maurice Oak. Owen's got a little push there at the point of attack, but uh, just a little bit of a crease. Dorsey running hard to take advantage of it. And a second down and seven coming up. 
Dorsey again twisting and chair bugging his way through the line of scrimmage and picks up pretty good yardage. That's good hard running once again by TK Dorsey. He's setting up his blockers by making the good cut. When he, when, when he does that, he puts the defenders in a position where they're slightly off balance so the offensive lineman can take advantage of that. And, and he's running with his eyes as well as with his feet. Good job by TK Dorsey. Rutgers on third down conversions, five for 10 in today's game. Third down and one at the 42. Bumble, Tarver picks it up and may get a first down. He'll get a lot more as he's across the 30 and down to the 25. He put a great move on Tim Driscoll to get the extra yardage. Hey, a lot of the breaks went against Rutgers in the first half. That's bound to balance out as long as you continue to play hard. Watch it on the replay. The handoff is supposed to go to Bailey. It's left on the floor. Tarver picks it up, has the presence of mind to sprint to the outside. Now watch this move right here. Great strong move by Tom Tarver. Nice play. First down and 10 at the 24-yard line. Here's to give to Bailey, who's brought down in the backfield. Super defensive play up front. Number 78, Paul Schultheis. Backup defensive end, just a sophomore, and one of 12 New Jerseyans on the Colgate squad. Schultheis hailing from Willingboro, New Jersey. Well, he did, a, he did a nice job of beating the man to the block. He got in the backfield before the blocker could set up. He read the play and charged aggressively. That's how you break up the blocking patterns of the offense. Good job, Schultheis. Second down. And call it 12, high formation for the Knights this time. Tarver play action. Now he's rolling away and is brought down from behind. James Moore, senior defensive end out of Boston with a super defensive play. Oh, he showed great speed on the corner. Talking about James Moore, you could see on the uh, two previous plays that Tarver has the ability to run the football. Moore would not let him turn the corner and drag him down. Third down, and 21 coming up. Tarver back to throw, looking, has a receiver out of the backfield, that's Moore at the 25 to the 20, and dives ahead for the first down. What an effort by Antoine Moore. Oh, great play there, but an also great play by someone, and it will not appear in statistics, number 83, Randy Jackson, the split in. Did the deep pattern to take the defensive back first. That's number one. The first thing he did right, then secondly, he made a great block, holding up the defensive back just long enough for Antoine Moore to make that leap and uh, get the first down. First down and 10 for Rutgers at the 15-yard line. High formation. Here's Bailey. Hunts to the 6-yard line. Good block by Antoine Moore and a good cut yeah, by bro. Bailey off of that block. Yeah. Rutgers starting to click offensively now. They're doing the little things that don't appear once again in the statistical reports at the end of the game, but doing those things that will win the football game. In the game of four, second down and six. Second down and six at the 11-yard line. Split receivers out to the left side. Here's the give to Dorsey. He goes that way. He cuts it in at the five. He's down to the three-yard line. Nice hard running by TK Dorsey and using his big man's speed to get outside. Lou then once he got the corner turn, he put the shoulder down, ran all knees and elbows and got the extra two yards. 
sets up a first and goal situation. Rutgers really clicking on offense right now. This is once again looks like a different ball club. Bailey tries to burrow his way in, and he's down to the two-yard line. Keep in mind, Rutgers is without Jimmy Can in this situation. He injured that ankle in the first half. Yeah, he's a kid you could really use on the goal line, too. Knows, uh, knows how to find that end zone. Right now, what would be wide open, Lou, is if Tauber were to fake one way and then bootleg it, put that ball on his hip and bootleg it the other way, he'd walk into the end zone with the style of defense that Colgate's playing right now. 13th play of the drive coming up. Bailey up and over. Touchdown, Rutgers. Had a little crack and just bolted himself into the end zone. Looked like he got shot out of that Rutgers cannon, Lou. And Hanson in to kick the extra point. But it appears as if one of the Colgate players is shaken up. They'll escort that player. Mike Jasper is the player shaken up for Colgate. Hanson into attempt the extra point as Rutgers has vaulted into the lead, 13 to 10. Kick is up, kick is good. Nice drive by the Scarlet Knights as they have regained the lead, 13 to 10. With four minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the third. I tell you, Lou, sometimes I'm kind of glad that Rutgers isn't a, a, a higher scoring offensive ball club because they can't at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, if you're not really ready for it, you, you want to leave right out of the press box. <laughs> that Rutgers cannon, yeah. Well, Doug Graber hopes yeah, Doug Graber hopes that it is firing off quite a bit this season. Here's the replay of the touchdown. Watch, nice little crease there. Good block by Dorsey, the fullback, the lead block there. Then Bailey took advantage of the little seam that that created and vaulted his way into the end zone. All right. The drive, 13 plays, 80 yards, 6 minutes and 56 seconds taken off the clock. Bailey, a two-yard touchdown run, capped it off. The key play, though, was Tarver to Moore on that third and 21 in which he dove for the first down. Oh, great individual effort by two players. Not only Antoine Moore, the guy who received the ball, but by the blocker, Randy Jackson, number 83, did a terrific job. Once again, that's something that's not going to appear necessarily in the statistical column in the paper tomorrow, but people should be aware of that he had a big hand in making that play a success. Benestat will kick it off. And up and not at the 5, the 10, 15, 20, and dives ahead to the 25-yard line. Kogi will put it in play at that point. I was watching number 37, Bellamy, that time, who has made two big hits on the special teams, and they assigned two guys to block him this time, and he was taking those guys out. He says, hey, if I can't put the ball carrier down, if they're going to send the, if they're going to assign a white shirt to try to block me, well, I'll get them instead. He's an aggressive kid. I think he's going to be a player for them. Colgate trying to break a three-game losing streak to 1A teams. Their last win was against Army by the score of 22 to 20. Right now, they're down by four. Good win to throw. He's in trouble, and throws it away. No flag on the play, and the Rutgers fans are looking for a call. It was Elnardo Webster who came in to make the play. Web Webster and Miller, let's watch it on the replay here. Watch the good pressure at the bottom of the screen, number 99, the 93 from the top of your screen. Watch Webster flush him out, and here comes Miller as they put him down. Very aggressive play by the Rutgers defensive line. And a second down and 10 upcoming for the Red Raiders. Rutgers defense playing much more aggressively here in the second half than they did in the first. It appears that way anyway. Good 
Irwin to throw, but whistles and flags on the play. I think you're going to get a delay. I think they were just a little bit late getting the ball off. But let's wait for the Zebras. I love it when I'm right, huh? And delay game is the call. So back up Colgate five yards. You know, Lou, you said something about Rutgers defense playing aggressively. You know, they just didn't play that poorly in the first half. People get spoiled, sometimes even by one performance. They were so stellar against Kentucky. People expect that kind of performance, minus seven yards rushing every single week. That can't happen. This is a good offensive ball club. They were not getting blown out. They really weren't. They didn't give up a, an enormous amount of rushing yards, and they gave up a decent amount to a good quarterback. So they're playing well. Second down. Good win to throw. Again, heavy pressure and incomplete. Intended for Delaney at the 35-yard line. And the coverage offered by Willie Jackson, the freshman from Elizabeth. He was the ECAC Rookie of the Week in his first collegiate game. Ron Allen was also there on the play, an excellent defensive back. That was a big part of the reason why the, the pass was incompleted, but the second part of it was the fact that the Rutgers defensive line is putting enormous pressure right now on Dave Goodwin. You can't throw the ball when you've got red shirts, red shirts draped all over you, Luke. It's not going to happen. Goodwin to throw. Rolls out. Right side again. Heavy pressure. Fires it in. Incomplete penalty marker on the play. And will probably be interference against Rusty Mays, who went up and over the top against the Colgate receiver, Jeff Steinglant. That's a good call by the official. Not popular here on the Rutgers campus, but that was a good call. Let's watch Rusty Mays. Here's Goodwin. Gets good pressure again. Rusty Mays up the middle. Now watch Mays get here just a bit early. You saw it just as they entered into your screen. Look like a good defensive play, but if you analyze it very closely, Mays did get there just before the ball did. And they will mark it off against the Knights. That will give Colgate a first down. Rutgers has had five penalties, 35 yards here this afternoon. Remember, they've been very crucial penalties, too. That was a third down situation, so it's not only the yardage, but it's the fact that it comes at a very inopportune time. Not that penalties ever come at a good time. Walmart, 35. Not much yardage there. Steve Williams up the middle. The ball is loose. Rutgers got a hold of the football, but they say that Williams was indeed down. Jamil Jackson on the stop for the Knights. Well, they kind of, the Rutgers kind of held a defensive team meeting on the uh, offensive running back's chest that time. But Jamil Jackson really made the primary stop, but he had lots of help from his friends. I tell you, Rutgers right now really putting a lot of helmets on the football. We're inside four minutes remaining in the third quarter. It is 14 to 10, Rutgers. Ball marked in 34. Good win, throws, catch is made, no, they say incomplete. A fine try by the Colgate receiver, Jeff Stenglein. Good defense that time by Rusty Mays. I tell you, they really test Rusty Mays quite often. They think they'd rather throw at him instead of against Ron Allen. Let's watch it here on the replay. Good rest by Scott Miller here. Ed watching at the tail end. Let's see if he makes the catch, tries to wrap the ball around on the inside. No, it hits the ground before he has possession. Good call by the official. Third down and ten. When receivers left side, good one's going to go that way, but he's being pursued. Let's it go. Nearly intercepted by Sean Williams. And Goodwin took quite a shot from Chris Jones. And also Jamil Jackson getting in there. Blitz that time by Rutgers with Jamil Jackson coming up the middle. Chris Jones also getting there from his right end position, putting a lot of heat on Dave Goodwin. That's the difference in the ball game right now is Goodwin does not have the time to set and throw. That's Arnold Jr., the defensive line coach. He's got to be happy. Rory Crump is in the punts. Four punts today, 36.8 average. Marshall Roberts with 25. Nice move, gets away momentarily, and is written down at the 30-yard line, and a penalty marker on the play. Rich Burke 
down to make the tackle for Colgate. Roberts returns the kick. He's a flag down. And we'll have to wait and see. They're talking to Colgate, which makes us think, of course, that it's against Rutgers. Yeah, we make people think we're that astute, but <laughs> not that hard to tell when you see all And it is clipping. All the white shirts around the zebras there, you figure it's got to go kiss Rutgers. When we originally saw the flag, I thought perhaps it might have been a face mask penalty because the tackle was made high on Roberts. But clipping is indeed the call, and they move it back to the 19-yard line. So Rutgers will start back there. The Rutgers can't play too conservatively. One of the things they did well in their last touchdown drive was mix it up. Some good play action passing and mixing in some good running there. They'll have to do the same thing here. First down to Rutgers from their own 14 yard line. 3.06 remaining in the third. Murphy, the tight end, again in motion. Dorsey, off tackle, and puffs across the 20 to the 24-yard line. I see some new, oh, go ahead, Lou, I, but I see some new jerseys in for Rutgers. Steve Trent, Say that. Steve Tan Ribbler is the defensive <laughs> tackle. Okay, not all that tough to say. He did a great job and watch it here on the replay. The left tackle in for Alan Mitchell right now, giving Mitchell a breather, did a great job of leading through the hole. Dorsey running hard. Dorsey, 14 carries, 74 yards so far. Second down and one. At the 24, here's Dorsey again. And he has a first down and much, much more as he's across the 30 to the 34-yard line. One thing T.K. Dorsey does effectively is hit that ball quick. He's very, very quick, and he's very, very aggressive. We call him Rutgers' first true fullback in a number of years, and we mean that because he runs like a fullback. He's six foot, 218 pounds, quick and aggressive. There it is on the replay. Boy, you don't want to tackle a guy like that. He's running all knees and elbows right now. Folks, take my word for it. <laughs> it's first down and 10 at the 33-yard line. Dorsey again, nice cut, up near the 40-yard line. Finally making the tackle was Kevin Scheffler, back up outside linebacker. Nice little dipsy-do move by Dorsey that time. By that we mean he leans one way and then cuts hard the other direction. Once again, they're trying to do that to get players leaning in the wrong direction and taking advantage of that imbalance. A minute and a half remaining in the third. Rutgers 14. And Colgate 10. Look at the Rutgers cheerleaders who are a little bit happier now than they were earlier. Here's the fake to Dorsey. Tarver back to throw. Now he steps up. Now he'll run. Puts his head down across the 45 and a Rutgers first down at the 47. Great job that time by Tarver. His receiver was covered. Let's watch the replay here. We got nice isolation on Tom Tarver. He's a big guy. He's not small. He's six foot one, two hundred and ten pounds. Now watch it here. Now he's got decent protection, but his receiver just isn't open. So he puts the ball down, then puts his head down right here to get the first down. He's not afraid to do that. And at six foot one, two hundred and ten pounds, he shouldn't be. Fifty seconds remaining here in the third. Bailey, the one setback, still has his balance and keeps his feet down to the 45. Paul Schultz had him in the backfield, but quick feet by William Bailey. They teach him as a running back so to never quit. You have to keep your feet moving at all times. Don't stop until you hear the whistle. Now watch Schultz shoots the gap, gets a pretty good shot at Bailey's feet, but he keeps his shoulders square and drives his legs upfield then carries a tackler for extra yards. That's a nice little run by a young running back. Jenkins is down. That would hurt about two feet down in the game. James Jenkins, number one tight end for the Scarlet Knights, shaking up, but he appears to be all right, Dan. He'll come off the field under his own power. You know, he's had a quiet game as a receiver, but I've been watching him block, and he's really done an excellent job. So you don't really get an opportunity to talk that much about the blockers up front, but he has done a terrific job, especially here in the second half. They've run off of his blocks quite often. 
25 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Rutgers again on the move. They have the lead after trailing 10-7 at the half. Tim Pernetti, number 90 in at tight end now, and Bailey breaks the tackle but can't break another as he's brought down at the 45-yard line. He might have picked up a yard. And that will do it here in the third quarter. Three quarters gone by at Rutgers Stadium. The score, Rutgers 14 and Colt 8 10. in community sports you can't beat local cable programming tv that hits home analysis planning design management preservation and rehabilitation of the land from landscape design to urban planning we're shaping the future our domain. The water is our preserve. We are the New Jersey chapter of the American Society of Landscape Architects. Welcome back to Rutgers Stadium. Lou Brogno joined by Frank Labono. Glad you could join us for our TKR Sports production of Rutgers Football. It's got the nice leading the Red Raiders of Colgate. 14 to 10 as we prepare for quarter number four. Rutgers in that third quarter did it on the ground. 17 rushes for 84 yards are beginning to dominate at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, 194 yards total on the ground uh, rushing today for Rutgers. Bigger offensive line. We talked about it earlier in the game, and we said you may not notice it right away, but late in the game, third and fourth quarters, that type of size can aid you in dominating the game later. Third down and two. Rutgers moving left to right on your screen. Here's Antoine Moore. He has a Rutgers first down. Antoine Moore carrying the Rutgers first down. Moore has been impressive in his brief stints here today. He's quick. He's got very, very quick feet and made a good judgment that time. Used his quickness to take one step to the outside and then put his head down and made sure he got the first down. That's, that's good running. You know, you, sometimes you say, hey, my well, well, big deal, the guy got two yards. But when it's a crucial two yards, that's a big play. So a first down for the Scarlet Knights at the 41. sure what the delay is. Confusion in the Rutgers. Uh, and right Tarver now. calls timeout, so we will take one as well. 14 minutes, 34 seconds remaining in the fourth. Rutgers 14, full game 10. <laughs> Make your community special only on local cable programming. TV that hits home. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. Bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. If you're not recycling, you're throwing it all away. Fourteen ten, Rutgers over 
Division 1AA Colgate here in the fourth quarter. 14 minutes and 34 seconds remaining. In the fourth, Tom Tarver a little bit confused, the Rutgers quarterback, on that last play call, so he called timeout. And Rutgers breaks the huddle now with a first down and 10. Murphy in motion, and Dorsey with a huge hole. T.K. Dorsey fumbles the ball. They're going to say he was down, I believe. I think they're going to call him down, though. Yes. No fumble. No fumble. Bill Nash, the free safety, makes the hit. And Rutgers does have a first down at the 26. Huge hole, though, that time for Dorsey. He took full advantage of it. Number 12, Chris Brantley, last week, two receptions, 76 yards. I think he pounced on what would have been a fumble if Dorsey was not down, but the Zebra said he was on the ground. The ground cannot cause a fumble. Dorsey, 17 carries, 103 yards, his second consecutive 100-plus rushing game. It's been a great addition to the Scarlet Knights, though, for the transport her from Miami. There's Bailey with a huge hole and shows excellent speed and good determination as well as he pushes ahead across the 15 to the 13-yard line. Nice block that time downfield by Chris Brantley as well as we take a look at the sophomore from West Milford. You know, Brantley runs with authority. You know, uh, Bill Parcells of the Giants used to say about Joe Morris that uh, when people said he's small, he, he's not small. He's, he's 5'6", he's short, but he's not small. Bailey... 5'6", 182 pounds. That's pretty solid, Lou, and he, and he runs hard. First down and 10 at the 13-yard line. Bailey drops the ball and then recovers. Almost a costly turnover for the Knights. Well, that's the second time that's happened with Bailey. Remember, he's a newcomer, Lou, and maybe not entirely familiar with the Rutgers offense. Oh, he's had the whole uh, preseason in the game under his belt. Let's watch it on the replay. Watch how Tarver has to reach way out to try to give Bailey that football. Now, that could either be the quarterback slow getting out there or the running back trying to get to the outside before he gets the football. That could, that could be a little bit of combination of both. Second down and 10 at the 12-yard line. Harper throws, has Jenkins the tight end, and what a, what a run by Jenkins. Touchdown Rutgers. He just ran over Rich Burke. The blitz was on, Lou. They had the blitz on, which means one-on-one -on -one coverage. The strong safety, Rich Burke, matched up with the big tight end, James Jenkins. Todd read it dumped the ball out to Jenkins, and then it was all the big guy running up one side of Burke and right down the other. Jeff Hansen, straightaway place kicker, in to kick the extra point. Kick is up. It is good. 12 minutes, 43 seconds remaining in the fourth. A break in the action. Rutgers 21 and 10. by Jenkins to get into the end zone. 21 to 10, our score. Rutgers in the lead, 12-43 remaining in the fourth. High kick. Taken at the 10. Hot knocks. One down at the 29-yard line, and that's where Colgate will put it into play. Let's take a look at the replay of the touchdown. Here it is. It rolls in. It's, uh, well. Nope, didn't quite get that replay in that time. First down and 10 at the 30-yard line for Colgate. Williams sneaks 
yards away, picks up about two or three to the 33-yard line. Okay, let's take a look at that replay if we can of the touchdown. Here it is. Now watch the blitz. They're in an, an all-out blitz. Rutgers does a nice job of picking it up, and Tarver dumps off to Jenkins. Now watch this. Run up one side and right down the other. That's a 235-pound tight end filled with desire in the open field. I tell you, you'd rather tackle a refrigerator that's rolling downhill. Don't take my word for it. And I don't, I don't want to take anything. That's James Jenkins. I don't take anything away from her. But folks, trying to tackle a runaway train just ain't easy. The drive, 11 plays. 10 plays on the ground, one through the air, and of course that was the touchdown. 81 yards in all, 5 minutes and 22 seconds. Tarver to Jenkins, 13-yard pass, and Jenkins today, three catches for 26 yards. One of the Rutgers players Scott Miller. is shaking up, and Scott Miller, the fine defensive end from Elmwood Park. I think he's going to be okay, look, he's running off just fine. And Miller does come off the field. That's good news for Scarlet Knight fans. He's got this tattoo on his forearm. I've got to ask him about that sometime. He wears a, a, a hairdo that's probably a little stranger than mine, though, which uh, is saying something. And uh, So he's, he's a free spirit. He's out there hustling all the time, though, and I know the Rutgers coaching staff likes him very much. Second down and six to throw over the middle and a nice run after the catch. And that's Dan McCarthy who makes the play. He's a senior split end. He had four receptions in the first game against BU, 46 yards and two touchdowns. So he's a fine target for quarterback Dave Goodwin. He's watching here on the replay. Makes a nice move real quick. A little, little quick in pattern. Goodwin gets the ball and breaks the tackle of Jackson there. Then Marshall Roberts finally covers him to put him down. Williams upended at the line of scrimmage. Todd Lane in on the play. Todd's doing a nice job. He's coming off. And you see him right there in the center of your screen. He's, he's got a soft cast on... Uh, on his right hand, and his left hand is all bandaged up. I tell you, big guy's kind of banged up, especially for this early in the season. Folks, you got to get used to playing with pain, though. This is a, a tough, aggressive game to play, and you got to be, you got to be prepared to play with those uh, nicks and bruises. Colgate comes up with a second down and eight at the 48-yard line. Goodwin back to throw. He's in trouble now, trying to do direct traffic. Throws and has his receiver, but out of bounds. It's incomplete. Again, on the catch is Jeff Stenglein. Ball was there just a little bit too tall for Stenglein. Right now, the Rutgers defense is secondary, doing a good, good job. Goodwin had time to throw the football. The, the pass protection eventually broke down, but that was enough time for Goodwin to release the football. It just really wasn't anybody open, though. In the third period, third down and eight. 10. Eleven minutes remaining in the fourth. Rutgers in command at the moment, up by 11. Goodwin back to throw again. He's chased out of the pocket. Penalty marker on the play. He throws again. The catch is made, but out of bounds by Stenglon. And there's also a flag on the play, as we mentioned. Probably will be holding yeah, you're against get, Colgate. You're going to get holding. Number 94, Chris Jones, was in there again. Wouldn't have had the sack had he not been held. So the offensive lineman decided to take the lesser of two evils and save his quarterback's life and hold Chris Jones that time. And the Rutgers fans with a mock cheer towards the referees. It is declined, of course, and Colgate will have to punt. Hey, Chris Jones, a very, very good-looking young defensive lineman, only a sophomore, really red-shirted freshman, six foot one, 260 pounds, and he's very, very quick. He's a good pass rusher. He's, Rutgers fans can look for good things from Chris Jones for a few years to come. Here's Crump's kick. It's a high spiraling kick. Roberts at the 10, and he's hemmed in there. So good special teams coverage by the Colgate Red Raiders. Felipe Figuera down to make the tackle. Also TJ Donahue, number 58, downfield quickly. 21 to 10 hour score. Rutgers on its way. Unless something dramatic happens. Well, this is a big two. It's a series for Colgate, Lou. They've got Rutgers backed up right now. They've got to keep them there. Rutgers would be on its way to its second victory 
of the season. Of course, there's a long way to go in this one. And Colgate with Dave Goodwin at the controls and has quick strike capability. Here's the give to Dorsey who just gets nipped before he broke into open field. But a good run again, about six or seven yards on first down. There's a good close-up of TK Dorsey. Big guy runs hard inside. I tell you, that is so important for a ball club move because it keeps the defense honest. Rich Burke made the tackle, and more and more, Colgate's secondary people are making most of the tackles. That's not a good sign for the Red Raider defense. Again, it's Dorsey this time. The Red Raiders play it well up front. And he picks up just a few. And a third down coming up. They stacked it up pretty good there on the left side. They're doing a good job, and it's a very important series for them. I notice Rutgers also with some red shirts in there. Number 61, Doug Kavulich is in at a guard position. Steve Tanribbler was playing before Alan Mitchell back in. This is the way you get some guys experience, and in key situations, by no means quote-unquote garbage time. Third down and two. High formation for the Knights. Play action pass. Tarver overthrows Jenkins. He had him open, but fired it high and over his head. He, so had, him, he had him out there, Lou. He just, just overshot it. Rutgers will have to punt. Colgate needed a good defensive series. They got it. I mean, they held when they had to. Second and short, they stuffed them. Then the ball was overthrown on third down, so Colgate catches a break here. We'll get the ball back. <laughs> Dunn is in to kick for Rutgers. The wobble kick. And taken by Delaney at the 45. Angles and it's flush at the 45-yard line. And the Rutgers special key play has been outstanding. Mike Conlin really got downfield that time. Boy, I tell you, for a big guy, Conlin is 6'2", 235 pounds, man. That's a vicious open heel field uh, hit. You don't expect your linebackers to really be quite that quick in the open field, but Conlon showed you he can shake it. Colgate takes over. First and 10 for the Red Raiders at the 45-yard line. Rutgers 21, Colgate 10. Intercepted! Rusty Mays with a beautiful interception. A brilliant interception by Rusty Mays. The ball was slightly underthrown, and Mays took full advantage of it to step in front. Great reaction to the football by the defensive back. That's why your defensive backs are among the best athletes on the field. For Mays, his second interception this year. First down and 10 for Rutgers. Bailey caught behind the line of scrimmage. Paul Schultes on the tackle. He's played a good game, Schultes. He's, he's done all right. Let's take a replay of the interception right here. We'll take a look at the replay, I should say. Let's take a look. Good one. Rolling to his left. Now watch the ball. is slightly underthrown and very, very wobbly. That's not where you want to throw that football. That could be real dangerous. If Mays would have been able to retain his feet, nobody would catch him. Second down and 15 for the Scarlet Knights. Are you at their own 47? Up the middle, William Bailey breaks through into the secondary and is down to the 35-yard line. That's a heck of a run. He is such a hard runner for a small-ish kind of guy, 5'6", 182 pounds. One of the reasons why the coaches like him, he is a hard-nosed kid. Remember, he was a walk-on, was not awarded a scholarship. He had to win one, and it was one that was gladly given by the Rutgers, Rutgers coaching staff. Bailey. Bailey, 14 carries, 55 yards. A quick look at Rusty Mays before that, who made the interception to set up this Rutgers drive. 
Outside Bailey turns the corner and is tripped up at the 30 yard line. Bailey once again. Kevin Scheffler in on the tackle for Colgate. Under eight minutes remaining here in this fourth quarter. And it's a five-yard gain on the first down. Rutgers fans and cheerleaders and the Scarlet Knight himself are happy. You think that guy's got a big head or something? I mean, maybe they're winning too much. I don't know. I don't know where I come up with the blow. Just, he's always happy, Frank, though. <laughs> That's his personality. Okay. Second down and five. At the 30. Manetti in the slot and goes in motion. Dorsey powers the head on tackle. Picks up maybe two or three. Rich Morelli, the outside linebacker, makes the tackle for the gates. Right now, Colgate ganging up at the line of scrimmage. They know that Rutgers wants to down the football. Time is against Colgate, so Rutgers will do their best to keep the football on the ground. Colgate knows that, so they're going to do their best to stop the run and bring as many people to the line of scrimmage as they can. Under seven minutes remaining, 21-10 the score. Harvard to throw. Has a receiver and Brantley goes way up the ladder to make the catch. Inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. Oh, great catch by Chris Brantley, the sophomore. Boy, that's some athleticism. He went way up to get it. There's a fumble on the play. It seems like the Scarlets still have the football, though. Brantley had a big game last week. He had two receptions for 76 yards. That's production against Kentucky. Well, he's, he's a big play kind of guy, one of the faster of the wide receivers. And believe it or not, it's just 5'10", 170, one of the bigger wide receivers that Rutgers had. Rutgers very deep at the wide receiving position. Uh, if you talk early on with Coach Graber, he would tell you that they're very, very deep there and they want to take advantage of that, that depth. First down and 10 at the 16-yard line. Guarantano and Bailey both wide to the right, but they run it up the middle, and there isn't much there. Frank Gianci comes up to make the tackle. He's played a good guy, a good game, excuse me, in a reserve role, talking about Frank Gianci. He's done a nice job. Six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Rutgers on their way to victory number two in this 1990 season. And that, of course, would match their entire victory total from a year ago. They were 2-7-2 in 1989. Well, Rutgers has really done a lot of things to improve their ball club, and as time allows, Lou, maybe we can talk a little bit about that. 540 in counting down. Here's Tarver, a couple of quick steps, fired, Melton, touchdown. Beautiful, just beautiful. <laughs> Hanson is in to kick the extra point. And it's good. Rutgers 28, Colgate 10, 538 remaining here in this fourth quarter. Lou, that was a beautiful read by Tom Tarver. He saw the isolation. Gary Melton against Bill Nash and threw the ball with some of authority. Put it on a frozen rope. You just can't diagram it any better than that, Lou. That was a perfect read and a perfect pattern. Tarver to Melton. He just can't do it any better than that. Watch it here on the replay. Now, Tarver sees the isolation. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Quick slant pattern to Melton. Gets the inside position. That's against Matt Taylor, excuse me, number 23. The isolation. Single coverage. Cornerback on the wide receiver. Tarver saw it all the way. Put the ball in perfectly. Six points, Scarlet Knights. The drive, seven plays, 47 yards, three minutes and 32 seconds. Tarver to Melton, 15-yard touchdown pass. Tom Tarver, not a bad day. 12 of 16, 143 yards. Two TDs and only one INT. That's not going to hurt his statistical, easy for me to say, let's try that again, statistical ranking as number one in the nation in terms of passing efficiency. 
Matt Benestat will kick it off at the 35-yard line. Colgate led 10-7 at the half, but since then Rutgers has outscored the Red Raiders 21 to nothing. Here's Honecutt bang down at the 23-yard line, and that's where Colgate will put it in play. Rutgers has really asserted its physical superiority here in the second half, and I was trying to make that point in the first half when the Rutgers faithful was getting a little deflated, saying, what's going on here? Why are we blowing these teams out? Well, Colgate is a good ball club, and, and the style that they play and the style that Rutgers plays is going to take some time for Rutgers to assert that physical superiority, and by that I mean bigger players, more depth. It's come to pass here in the second half. First down and 10, Red Raiders at the 23, good win back to throw. He throws and has his fullback, Hopko, and he is pummeled at the 23. He didn't gain much yardage at all on that play. The you know, Rutgers will give Colgate that kind of play all day long. Hopko couldn't get out of bounds and didn't get any yardage either. There's a look at Tom Tarver, Rutgers quarterback. Gonna get a drink late here in the fourth quarter, and again has had an excellent day. You know, he's got his jersey off too, which probably means we're going to see Bill Chesna, his backup, who has earned a chance to play. And I'm sure for the next Rutgers offensive series, we'll see Bill Chesna, who is warming up on the sideline. Second down and nine. Twin receivers split out to the right. High formation. Goodwin to throw. Straight back to throw. Now he waits, and he has a receiver, and almost beat Teddy. For Colgate was number 46. We don't have a 46 on our <laughs> roster, but anyway. Let's see if I can find that. Okay, there is no 46 on our Colgate roster. It might be Bill Sp Sparacio. That's it, the tailback, Bill Sparacio. The freshman out of Long Island. Oh, thanks, okay. thank the guys in the trucker <laughs> letting us know that one. Bill Sparacio, <laughs> not on our depth chart. Wasn't on the card, folks. Can't help that. Third down. And seven. Here's Goodwin to throw. Steps out of the pocket. He'll carry it himself. Looks to get out of bounds. He does. And Elmarno Webster just gives him a little bit of a shove out there. But he has a Colgate first down with less than four minutes remaining. Good play by Goodwin that time. All the receivers were covered. Took the ball down, got the first down yardage, and then got out of bounds. That's good for two reasons. One, it stops the clock. Secondly, doesn't get to take a beating. <laughs> and Mike Foley, the Colgate coach, certainly would like to see what kind of drive his club still has late here in the fourth quarter. Obviously, it's going to be very difficult to win the game, but they have their own league in which they play, the Patriot League, and they have a full season against one double-A opponents. And he wants to see what his club is made of here against a bigger, stronger opponent. Here's Goodwin back to throw. It is nearly intercepted. It was tipped by two Colgate receivers. And it just falls harmlessly incomplete. Another, another terrific rush by Chris Jones. I was watching him isolated against the left tackle. And he did a terrific job of shedding the blocker and getting in Goodwin's face once again, which caused him to throw the ball before he was really ready to throw it. Chris Jones, very, very exciting young player. Down at 10. Good to throw. In trouble. Gets away from Marty Mays. Now sprints out right side. Looks to get out. Takes a hit. On the far sideline. Don't want your All-American quarterback taking too many hits like that. Well, I tell you, again, Chris Jones, man, he chased... Goodwin all over the field and got a good hunk of that tackle. You really have to like that out of a sophomore defensive line, but I can't say enough about the kid. I'm really very, very impressed with him. He's excellent. Third down and four at the 37-yard line. Three minutes, ten seconds remaining in the game. Goodwin back to throw. He throws. It is incomplete. Intended across the middle for Stendline. I think it might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure. Rutgers right now getting good penetration from their defense. Lots of New Jersey's in for Rutgers on defense. Corey Kozak is in. Joe Schifoni is in. 
Frank Quazzo has been in and out. A lot of, a lot of New Jersey's in there. And it's fourth down, and Colgate will punt. This surprises me, being down by 18 with three minutes remaining. Fourth down and four, the Red Raiders will punch. You're basically conceding defeat in that situation, aren't you? I have to agree with you that time, though. Rory Klopp it out of bounds, and Rutgers will get the ball. That's the 25-yard line, but the point is Rutgers gets the ball. Right, exactly. You can't score points when you're behind if you don't have the football. And look at the net difference right now. What did, let's see, what did, what did Colgate pick up? 10, 20, 25 yards in exchange, 30 yards? That's nothing at this point in the ball game. Big hand for Rutgers defense. Well. And Bill Chesna does come in at quarterback for Rutgers. So Chesna, the senior out of Mountaintop, Pennsylvania, 6'2", 214 pounds, will get a few snaps here for the Scarlet Knights. And again, he had a heated quarterback battle with Tarver in the preseason. Chesna gives to Vince Hall, who doesn't get a whole lot of yardage. T.J. Donahue comes up to make the tackle. In fact, it was a loss on the play of five. Yeah, Donahue has played an excellent game. You know, he's not the biggest linebacker I've ever seen in 6'2", 196 pounds. But he's quick and he's played very, very aggressively. He's been one of the better defenders. We we highlighted number 56, Mike Jasper, in the pregame. We haven't called his name all that often at all. T.J. Donahue has really played an overall better ball game. Two minutes and 46 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter is a timeout. Rutgers wins 28 to 10. In case you tuned in late to it, we'll get you caught up to date on what exactly has happened today. It was an impressive first half by the Colgate Red Raiders. They led at halftime on a score of 10 to 7. Dave Goodwin with a three-yard touchdown run. Also an 82-yard kickoff return by Ron Allen of Rutgers was the lone Rutgers score in the first half. And Colgate threw in a field goal as well, and thus they had the 10-7 lead at halftime. Second half, though, Rutgers has come out and played very good football. Tom Tarver with a couple of touchdown passes, and of course there was a run by William Bailey up the middle for a touchdown as well. Rutgers leads 28-10. Second down and 14, I formation, and Chesna gives for the second man through. And not much yardage there either as Colgate plays it very well. Well, Rutgers just looking to kill the clock. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting, Lou. It, it, it's not that Colgate has played that poorly in the second half. It's more that, that Rutgers has played that well. If, if you look at it, Colgate really hasn't turned the football over. They haven't had many costly penalties. They haven't played that poorly defensively. It's just that, that Rutgers really exerted its physical superiority in the second half. Rutgers, a bigger team, a more physical team with more depth. That's bound to take its toll sooner or later in a ball game, and that's exactly what I believe, anyway, happens here today. Colgate, by the way, just took their last timeout, so they're out of timeouts, and when the Red Raiders do get the football back, if they do, they will have to work the sidelines if they want to score any more points in this game because they just simply don't have any more timeouts. What do you think about this Colgate football team? Obviously, they're going to go down here today, barring a miracle. What do you think about this club in Division One AA? Well, in Division One AA, I think they'll do very well when they play teams of their own caliber. And I'm not, I'm not building anybody up or insulting anybody, but quite frankly, they don't have the depth that a program like Rutgers has, and it does take a toll. It, it, it's just bound to. But I think when they get matched in their own league, I think they'll do well. They, they really just have not made any real mistakes so far today. They just were, they were just a little bit overmatched. Third down at 14, Bill Chesna's first pass is out of bounds. Intended for Omar Coley, who is in the game. And that one sailed out of bounds, so Rutgers will have to punt it away. Colgate will have one more chance at it. See, there's a valuable lesson to be learned here by Rutgers as well, Lou, because they were down in the ball game, and I think they've learned the lesson here that they have to keep doing the things that they need to do to win football games. Talk more about that after the kick. Dunn is in to kick it away for the Knights. It's a wobbly end over end kick. Delaney takes it at the 40, shoots to the 45, cuts it upfield, and as they cross midfield into Rutgers territory at the 49. That's where Colgate will put it in play. 
Lou, the point that I was trying to make about the lesson that Rutgers has learned is the fact that they, yeah, they were down, but they can't lose their composure. Remember, we said they had to be patient. We talked about that in the pregame, and I think they were. They eventually got used to taking what Colgate was going to give them, and they had those long, very, very time-consuming drives. And I think a young team learns a lot from that. I really do believe that. And I think Rutgers is going to mature as the season progresses. I'm sure of it. First down, back to throw Goodwin. Let's go. Has a receiver. Catches me. And coming up to make the tackle is Jay Bellamy, who we've seen several times on special teams. And that comes up and makes the play on defense. Second down. Remember, Colgate can't stop the clock. They're out of timeout. The only way they can do it is to run out of bounds or an incomplete pass. Goodwin lets it go. Has a receiver. It's a first down for the Red Raiders across the 25-yard line. Mike Ryan. Mike Ryan. Sophomore tight end makes the catch, and Colgate is on the move. A minute 44 remaining. You know, Rutgers gave up a cheap touchdown, but the coaches call a cheap touchdown at the end of the game last week, and Doug Graber was not really happy about that. He worked it off. And losing that shutout. He really was. I'm sure he doesn't want to see a repeat performance here. Good win, pros. And again, they have a receiver. It looks to be Dan McCarthy this time, the split end, and he's inside the 15-yard line. Going to install, sorry, he's going to insert some of his first teamers in there. He had a lot of second and third teamers wanting to get them play time, but he does not want to give up this touchdown. Like, no way. No way. A minute and a half remaining in the game. Rutgers is on its way to victory, but Colgate is threatening to put more points on the board. They have been shut out here in this second half. 28-10 the score. One back behind Goodwin, looks to throw, has a receiver, Delaney's in! What a great individual effort by George Delaney, who has now 13 career touchdowns for Colgate, fifth on the all-time Colgate list. That was a terrific individual effort by Delaney. That's desire. You can't coach that. It comes down to, hey, who wants it most? In that particular instance, George Delaney, the flanker for the Colgate Red Raiders, wanted it. He knows his team can't pull this out. It doesn't matter. You play as hard as you can for as long as you can. That, that's a nice effort. It really is. And an effort to be commended. 28-16. The kick is up. It was partially deflected, but did go through. And it's 28-17. So Colgate puts up 17 points against the Rutgers defense. I tell you, Lou, when we, when we talk to Doug Graber during the week, I'm going to tell you right now, he's not going to be happy about that touchdown. He's just not. Let's talk about next week a little bit. Colgate will take on Cornell next weekend. What's up in upstate New York, what? and the Red Raiders uh, will be looking forward to that against the Big Red, who opened up against Princeton today. Well, it's a Division One AA foe, which the Ivy League plays. Now, remember, Division One Two A does not offer scholarships, at least not in this league anyway, as the Ivies do not. There, there are no athletic scholarships available to these kids. They do get financial aid, and but it's awarded on need, not on athletic ability. That's something to keep in mind. So it's hard for them to play against teams that are almost all scholarship players. And Rutgers next week, a mm. trip to State College. Yeah. Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions waiting out of Penn State. Re remember, Dick Anderson is going to be there. I tell you, the only advantage that I think that Rutgers will have next week is that Penn State has to play on the coast against a very, very tough and very, very physical USC team this weekend. Rutgers, Penn State next week. And then in two weeks, we'll be back at Giant Stadium. Rutgers, Michigan State. Looking forward to that one as well. Should be a heck of a ball game. Here's the onside kick, which everyone knew was coming. Jim Guarantano covers up for Rutgers. And with a minute 25 remaining, the spot of the night will have football. I want to invite you to remain with us for a few moments at the end of the game. We will have a couple of closing comments, talk a little bit about next week's opponent, Penn State, also. Could it ever, ever be easy to play in, in Happy Valley? <laughs> I don't think so. In front of 86,000 hostile screaming lunatics, it just can't be. But Rutgers is not a stranger to that situation. They have won there, actually, just a couple of years ago. That's right. 
Mike Body had a terrific game for Rutgers. Excellent game. There's the give up the middle. And Vince Hall carries the football. Minute 18 remaining. And uh, not many fans here at Rutgers have begun to file out. I thought Rutgers, uh, excuse me, I thought Colgate didn't have any timeouts left, but they seem to have one more because the Zebras awarded it to them. All right. Colgate. We stand We stand correct. It's not the first time it's happened, Lou. Colgate takes the time out. They'll talk it over. Well, the uh, Rutgers Stadium opener, successful for he head coach Doug Graber. He said he was looking forward to playing in this stadium. He is now one in this stadium. He has not stadium. lost as coach at Rutgers. 2-0. But, you know, he had a quote about last week's game. He said... It was a good start, but one game doesn't make a season by a long shot. And I'm sure he feels exactly that way about this game as well. Scott Miller is a happy defensive end, as you see right there. Well, it's going to be a learning process for Rutgers. But, hey, if you can win while you're learning, you'll take that at, you'll take that any time, and, and certainly why not. And I think that, that this is a, a turned around improved Rutgers football program. And a lot of the credit has to go to, to uh, Doug Graber. Second down for the Knights, and they are in their drop back and kneel offensive mode. <laughs> Chesna does that. The crowd doesn't like that, but... I never I, I, I don't a player either, to tell you the honest truth, Lou. I mean, you know, it's something that you have to do, but I hate you. You prepare yourself to play 60 minutes, Lou, and I want to play hard for 60 minutes, and the score is, is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. They teach you that. They coach you that. Then for the last minute and a half, they ask you to do nothing. That's, I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And we're under a minute remaining. And Chesna will take the snap. And there's some Mr. Cups on the line of scrimmage. 30 seconds remaining. Clock is winding down. And that'll do it. Rutgers, with 20 seconds remaining, has won their second game of the season, their first game at Rutgers Stadium. They will be 2-0. And, oh, and that's, again, quite an improvement when you consider they finished last year 2-7-2. Remember, last year Rutgers was caught in a situation of not beating teams they were supposed to beat. Maybe that has changed this year. That'll do it in the final. Rutgers 28-17. We're going to take a break, and we'll return with some closing thoughts in just a few moments.